I hope you are doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed, son. Stay blessed. Habakkuk was a scripture that just came to my spirit while we were worshiping. Verse 2. O oh Lord, I have heard of thy speech and was afraid. Listen carefully. O oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. Verse 3. God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. I wish we can get verse 4 in Amplify. It says, And his brightness was as the light. God bless you. Give us verse 4, please. Amplify. Just verse 4. Let's read together if you are a believer in this place. One to read. And his brightness was like the sunlight. Rays streamed from his hands. And there in that light is the hiding place of his power. There is a place where the power of God hides. There is a place where the might of God. When a man accesses that dimension, he says there in that light that came out of his hand is the hiding place of his power please sit down if you can just for a few minutes i welcome every one of us inside outside those following us online to our april miracle service the lord bless you bless you in the name of jesus we're happy to have prophet jangfa with us bless you jangfa thank you so much hallelujah and I think scattered somewhere, Debbie should be somewhere, one of the old faces, I hope she's around, uh, Billy Chin also, there are a number of old faces, I honor you God, bless you and every man and woman of God, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will do a very quick work with us tonight, and um, he has begun that quick work, praise the Lord. there is a system in the dealings of God with man that until we know and understand we will never as individuals and as a corporate people be able to enter into I love I love you hear that word often here the possibilities of God you see um limitation is a very dangerous thing in life because it covers you from seeing what else is obtainable and the danger of limitation is that the moment you cannot see more your limitation becomes your reference are we together 
So when we talk about the possibilities of God, it's an attempt to stretch us beyond the standard we have known about God, beyond the things that we have seen. You will only believe God to the limit of what you know or think He can do. You cannot believe God beyond the level of your perception and your understanding of His ability. My faith and your faith is hinged primarily on my perception of how mighty God is. So the apex of his might as defined by my understanding is the limit of my faith. Are we together now? You have to understand this. So the difference between any two people is not necessarily their makeup. It's not even the will of God. It is the dimension of access they have had to the revelation of God access to the mysteries of the kingdom that will separate them into different dimensions the Bible says in that light was the hiding place of his power there is a relationship in the kingdom between light illumination and dominion and power not just dominion in talk the experience of walking in the power, the authority, and the glory of the kingdom. In John chapter 1 verse 5, the Bible says, and the light shines in darkness. In fact, I like it from verse 4. Verse 4 says that in him was life. Listen carefully. In him was life. Then it says that life was the light of men. Now, this is a revelation I can dwell here all through. That means when light enters you, it changes to life. It is light in the exterior. But the moment it enters you, it translates into life. In him was life. But when that life was revealed, it became light unto men. Then he says that light has capacity to shine in darkness. Not discuss with darkness not negotiate with darkness and the bible says and the darkness comprehended it not i've shared it with us here and there again and again that dominion is not an impartation there is no special gift of dominion dominion is the resultant effect of your accurate comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom when you understand the systems of the kingdom and you have sustained grace from God to be able to apply your life will become nothing short of dominion it's not a a privy thing to a few people no there's no impartation for dominion dominion authority exercising kingdom authority is a product of understanding are we together let me tell you something I have discovered in my life by the grace of God in this ministry and around the lives of many great people including our fathers of faith that for any sustainable result in your life it must be built on understanding you can step into a reality based on your alignment with certain kingdom principles like the covenant of a man are we together? The servant of Elisha came and Elisha used his covenant with God to open his eyes. But the Bible never said his eyes remain open. You can step into certain possibilities even because of the kind of atmosphere you find yourself. But for anything to be sustainable, it must be backed up by understanding. It must be backed up by illumination. Fear this thing we call fear is a spirit but the character of that spirit is such that it takes advantage of darkness when your life is barren of truth and illumination then it magnetizes that spirit and then it puts your life in fear and in bondage the bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime it's subject to bondage so much more than the miracles you will receive and we trust God that there be an outpouring in this place tonight. I love to see the power
power of light over darkness it never bores me to see the victorious power of the Lord Jesus Christ at work in the midst of his people how an age-long situation can live overnight at the instance of a revealed word backed up you see the power is revealed through understanding it's not the activity doing spiritual things does not bring power it is understanding understanding is the key that connects the realm of the spirit and the problem in need of the touch of God understanding hallelujah knowledge is very important I'm saying this because we must cultivate a passion much more than receiving miracles much more than wanting impartation much more than a healing a deliverance we must cultivate an appetite not just for rema no no the word that must be understood and the end of understanding is when you know your role in the performance of that equation if you don't know your role you do not understand it the end of understanding is when my part of partnership is revealed to me no matter what you study no matter what you claim to know about God if you have not found your place what you ought to do to make it happen brothers and sisters you will never see the outstretched arm of God I am convinced that what we lack in our generation is not illumination no more than ever before there is no time in human history when information and truth from scripture is made available to people there are electronic devices there are different kinds of bible study works programs commentaries that have already been brought what people lack is understanding so it robs them of entering the experience of what they claim to know and it is dangerous to know a thing and lack the power of performance it is more frustrating it is better to be ignorant but that you know a truth you know a scripture you know that this is a possibility in god but you lack the understanding of how to make it manifest in your life hallelujah illumination light the difference between any two people in the kingdom yes we say it is grace yes we say it is anointing but remember the scripture says grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge there is a kind of knowledge not through any knowledge there is an exact understanding that delivers exact results you can know a dimension of God it will never mean you will see everything through the knowledge there is the knowledge that brings signs and wonders there is the knowledge that brings victory in certain areas there is the knowledge that brings prosperity and increase there is the knowledge that brings honor and influence there is the knowledge that multiplies the anointing so your appetites must be stretched with God to access the knowledge that is responsible for the outcome you desire many of us know what we want but we do not know what it takes to deliver the result this is where the challenge is if I call everyone at random here and I say stand up what do you want very few people will be in ignorance as to what they want someone will say I want a child another person will say I want to come out of poverty another person will say I want a supernatural anointing upon my life another person will say I want God to wipe my tears another song like our awesome worship team Sam beautify my life another person will say Lord take away shame and reproach from my life all these are possibilities that are within the context of the might of God but the key is there is the knowledge that will deliver that result you can have the knowledge that delivers to you the results to be free from barrenness but it will never prosper you you can have the knowledge that will give you a lot of money and financial prosperity but you will never carry the anointing to release supernatural possibilities to people you may never see the gift of the spirit work in your life it is important that we realize that light or the absence of it 
is the reason behind the challenges of many people gathered here tonight yes demon spirits yes principalities and powers but i've taught us here again and again that a stronghold is never a stronghold until there is a faulty mindset a stronghold is when spirits come and create fortification around a pattern of thinking and understanding it is that state that is capable of making the word of God of non-effect in the life of a man. Are we together now? Demons don't just veto you and act anyhow. They thrive upon your ignorance. Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything. It is a possibility that Satan comes. Meaning, when Satan comes, his character is to search for what in your life reflects darkness because he is darkness. So he finds an area of ignorance and that becomes his access point in your life. No matter how much you are excelling in another area, it is possible. So this answers the question once and for all, can a believer still be under the yoke of darkness? Absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. On the strength of insufficient renewal in, the, in a dimension, it will authorize the gates of hell to rubbish your life until light bails you out. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. It has become a national anthem here. By the way, if you've not listened to the last two series that we've had, I think that they are very phenomenal. They are very epochal. I challenge you, especially for those of you, um, those of us online and those of us who are coming here for the first time please get it and listen are we together now spiritual intelligence and the mystery of exemption you have to listen to it hallelujah first corinthians did i do something wrong again four i think i wrote it down here let's look at it Ephesians. i'm sorry Ephesians 4 18 it says having their understanding darkened having their understanding darkened listen then it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them so although you are a possessor remember our teaching the epistle of john this is the record it's a testimony it's a legal document that god has given us the way that divine life then it says that life is in his son so when you encounter the son, you have the life. But the Bible says ignorance can alienate you from the experience of the possibilities that come with that life. So I am a possessor of that life. But it is possible I can die SS or AS. I am a possessor of that life, but I can die barren. I am a possessor of that life and I can never rise in certain superior dimensions of the anointing. I am a possessor of that life. But that life is released through knowledge through knowledge through knowledge never forget this there are many people who claim and boast that they are carrying the life of God but the experience of their lives do not show that such a possibility exists within them knowledge knowledge in fact I love the way I think it's Isaiah 33 please give us Isaiah 33 I hope I'm right um, Isaiah it should be help me Holy Spirit Isaiah 33 it should be 5 or 6 Isaiah 33 5 or 6 it says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times that's right and wisdom and knowledge shall be what the stability when you find out that there is no dimension of stability in a man's life it is because there is no wisdom and there is no knowledge these two instruments in the spirit govern stability and establishment in the life of a man in the life of a people wisdom and knowledge Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the prophet was lamenting and it's a very interesting scripture because he starts saying my people my people so we're not talking of those alienated from the commonwealth of Israel my people he says are destroyed not because of Satan for lack of knowledge that means a believer can sustain an understanding and then alongside the grace that comes with that understanding and it will literally 
paralyze the possibilities of Satan within your life and within your vicinity. There is such a reality in the spirit that a man can live free of the dominion of Satan and everything he represents. Hast thou considered my servant Job? And Satan testified that I came around him and I could not break that hedge. He said, is it not because you have set a hedge? God did not only do it to Job. Job knew the secrets that would compel that hedge to be there. He says, in the days of my youth, when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle, that was the secret. Job knew what to do. Whilst his children went for party, he offered sacrifices in advance. Wisdom, understanding. He said, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. With me are riches, wealth and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. Let me tell you something. As powerful and mighty as God is, the ultimate key to confidence, the ultimate key to being mightily used by God, much more than just submitting to him, which is important, is that you must have a passion not for careless random spiritual knowledge not everything spiritual is useful for the dimensions you seek to enter i've given us an example if i go to the market and my goal is to make fri fried rice if i see yam will i buy it is yam bad but it's not part of the ingredients required for what i desire if i'm passing around and i see very red palm oil very good one should i buy it well i don't know whether they make fried rice with palm oil but i don't think so so i pass it is that true now when your journey in the spirit becomes such that you are attracted by everything spiritual two things will happen to you number one you will be puffed up with knowledge that is random and cannot produce your result number two your pace will be slowed down you need to have a specific understanding in this season of my life i desire to rise in unction and grace and you limit yourself to the supply of understanding that is responsible for the delivery of that result there are books i've bought for up to two years i've not read them it's not spiritual carelessness the dealings of god with me does not require me to touch those materials now so they are there they are useful but not needed in my work now the times God will shift in that dimension, then I will pick up those books. Knowledge. Very quickly before I pray for you, I want to give you four areas that I believe every believer that wants to do mighty things through and in God in this season must be able to access. Write it down quickly. Number one, in the beginning, God any believer that wants to be mighty you want to walk in the anointing you must have a revelation of god you must know who god is you can know about me by reading my books but you have to meet me to know me and the bible tells us that jesus has come as the expression of the fullness of the image of god so as i study the life of jesus christ I have an understanding of who God is. You see, the Bible is a compendium of God revealed in different dimensions. So that as I study the Bible and as I trust the presence of the Holy Spirit to reveal the reality of Jesus to me, certain things about God. Listen, if you are coming for Koinonia right now and someone stops you by the road and says, Apostle said Koinonia will now hold in PZ. You're not going to listen to that person because that communication based on me that you know that communication is not consistent with how i will behave if there is a need to change venue we have a more intelligent system of communicating it is that true so because of your access to the knowledge of me you know what is not me is that true but if you are a visitor who is coming for the first time never seen me and someone stopped you and said look i think you need to reverse you will go in obedience but you are obeying a wrong information so it's not just obedience it has to be obedience to the right thing there are too many people who are obedient to wrong informations and then they say lord i'm obedient 
you must understand God and understanding Jesus Christ together with everything that redemption brings and together with every reality that comes today in Christ this is the foundation for the victory of a believer you must be able to know who God is what Jesus Christ represented while he walked on the earth and what he means to you now and the quality of life we have discussed it what the Bible calls eternal life remember I told you it's not eternal life everybody has eternal life everybody has everlasting life that rendition is the best of the translators eternal life is a possibility once you are born the parable of the rich fool and Lazarus they all left this realm to another dimension of living and they were all alive could speak so everyone has eternal life and then Zoe I told us let me just do a, a quick recap that Zoe is not just a life superior to the human life because there are many lives that are superior to the human life money alone can create a possibility in your life where the quality of your life becomes higher than that of an average human being you don't have to be born again just that quality are we true divination can open you up to certain possibilities in the spirit where your life becomes higher in quality than that of a human life but it's not eternal life it was John that described to us he said this life is a derivative of an encounter with a person if for any reason you find out that you are living in a higher dimension of living above the normal human life but is outside of an encounter with a person your life is higher than a human life but it is not the way and this life is in his son he that hath the son hath that life you must know this because that light that enters you is what becomes your life that's what immunes you so you are able to manifest possibilities that are not privy to the average human being then you will know that it's possible to walk in health it's not just a, a, an issue of I won't be sick uh -uh, it's not just jacking yourself in empty confusion, confession no then you will know that you are able to rise above situations and circumstances not just by empty confession but an experience that is now your reality number two quickly the second dimension of knowledge that I think we need is the knowledge of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit very few people truly know the Holy Spirit many people know about him there are all kinds of theological exegesis about him you must know his person and you must know his ministry Jesus took out time in John 14 15 16 to introduce us to this personality called the Holy Spirit and the Bible makes us to understand that the success of Jesus was entirely because of the Spirit of God it's impossible to be mighty upon the earth ignoring him receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not knowing the Holy Spirit praying in tongues is not knowing the Holy Spirit walking in miracles is not knowing the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is a person you can know him you can understand his ministry what a joy your life will be a wonder when you know the Holy Spirit are we together you must know the Holy Spirit especially if you are in ministry listen I have learned by the grace of God and by experience that the absence of certain things can never be replaced by certain others oratory will never replace the absence of the Holy Spirit are we together going to school and reading well will never replace the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit kneeling down and asking people to give you impartation will never replace a personal press for an encounter and a knowledge with the Holy Spirit miracle signs and wonders will never replace him you can fake power you can't fake his presence are we together you must press to know the Holy Spirit 
I study God's generals and every time I have an opportunity to look at materials that make reference to them one thing was common between them regardless of their limitations and their temperaments they really knew him and their knowledge of the spirit brought accuracy in their lives they did mighty things that we are blessed you must know the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is not a personality to be known by men of God and miracle workers no the Holy Spirit is not a personality that should be known by apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors. No. The Holy Spirit is the key to living. And when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, the Bible says He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Can you pray one minute and say, Holy Spirit, reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever serve you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever follow. Lord, I will seek you in the morning. I will learn to walk in your way. Four step, step by five step, step, you lead me, and I will follow you all of the way. That's where we are bankrupt, no direction. We guess our lives and do everything, and your lifetime is too small for error. Your lifetime is too small for repeated mistakes. There must be a system in God for accuracy, in ministry, in family life your vocation whatever it is you cannot live your life just based on science there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but there is a personality for step by step you lead me i admit i'm ignorant but step by step you lead me and i will follow that's my part i won't be too ignorant i won't be too arrogant when he leads me i follow may be a stupid instruction but i'm too young to question him he's the spirit of the father i trust him you trusted a lecturer who is less than 20 years older than you you trusted a man who called himself your father not more than 30 years older than you and here comes one who was in the beginning the first personality of the trinity revealed and he comes to hold your hands and he said look i took a very frail man called moses and i guided him brothers and sisters this thing is not just skill and talent alone is the foolishness of submission to a personality not a power not just an influence a person some of us have foolishly followed him for years with stupid instructions admitting our ignorance in the the midst of a proud world Oh God, you are my God. Just the same. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning. I will seek you. In the morning And I will learn To walk in your ways For step by step You lead me And I will follow All of my days From tonight Step by step You lead you and I will follow you all of my days. The 
the holy spirit was with was with god when they were discussing your destiny it's a foolish thing to not need him in building it no if i was responsible for designing a curriculum and you ignore me when it comes to execution it is called pride i was in my mother's womb when he designed me i called you i ordained you so you walk with me and say holy spirit i don't know my way i don't know my way many people claim is their power and their might many people claim i understand church planting many people claim i know how to be a man of god but can you humble yourself and press for the knowledge of him the knowledge of the holy spirit will require time and it will require submission one thing i know about the holy ghost is he hates arrogance the holy spirit hates arrogance when he comes to you you are not colleagues he's not in you as a tenant he's in you as the landlord what will happen tonight brothers and sisters is credited to him it is him that reveals jesus here look how many of us have wasted time listen to me i'm speaking to you there are many of us seated here you would have been walking in your destiny already five years from now but this stubbornness of of not listening to him oh holy I, 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 all these church things no he told you go and serve in church by now certain things in your life would have gone ah. we wait on you lord we wait on you I wait on you, Lord, we wait on you, I wait on you, Lord, I wait on you, I wait on you, Lord, I wait on you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. That's what I've done with my life. That's what we've done with Koinonia. Fill this temple with your presence. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait. Lord, we wait up my destiny you are the only one who can open up my destiny take it high Mike let me tell you look at me at whatever level you are just walk with him you may have no iota of unction right now. Forget about anointing. Be foolish enough to hold him. Let him lead you. Let others go. Just walk with him. You may be behind, but brothers and sisters, there is an unction. He will put something upon your life that will shake the nations and take away the boastings of men. God is never too slow with men. Never too slow. If he's the one that kept you, know you are faster, faster than anything you can imagine. Faster. There are many arrogant pastors claiming that they want to do ministry, but they ignore him. They like human connection, but they leave him alone. I will never forget. Years ago, the Spirit of God will keep me and said son never try to rush anything just walk with me just walk with me like he's telling someone now don't rush your life i know you think everybody has gone ahead of you don't rush that marriage don't rush that thing walk with him one day with him will cover 10 years of mistakes walk with him apostle i have no job just walk with him just walk with him. If you were working five years ago, all your salary put together would not be more than six million. Walk with him. Nice. The Holy Spirit.
Holy Spirit. Fortunately, from next week, I'm starting a series. The Lord has allowed me to take a series. We are taking a series on the Holy Spirit. A complete, I will share with you very deep things that I've not shared with many people. The Holy Spirit. You ignore him as a businessman because you believe you are intelligent. I went to Harvard. You ignore him as a father because you think I'm not a small child. Hi. Will I ever be able to leave him? I know you are looking at me. It's because I'm the, I'm the part of the deal that is visible. But behind me, I'm not too smart to produce the results that you see. I'm not ashamed of it. Oh. There is one who is mighty. Mighty. There is an infinite wisdom behind everything you see. If it is the Lord's doing, remember, then it must be marvelous. If it's a man's doing, then it is natural, scientific. But the moment it becomes marvelous, it is the Lord's doing. You are marvelous, yeah. You are marvelous, yeah. Hey. You are marvelous, yeah. You are marvelous, yeah. value is defined by scarcity when you study developmental economics value is defined by what scarcity the ability of a thing to not be available everywhere the most scarce thing is whatever cannot be found on earth that's what he gives you as your reward anointing is not something you get just by fasting anointing is God's reward for trusting him for working with me I give you something that money cannot buy. For walking with me, I give you something that builds you out of shame and inferiority. I know you came from a background where nobody knew you and you were foolish enough to walk with me. Then I give you an unction. They may criticize you, but you don't deny proofs. Brothers and sisters, no, sir. I'm trusting that God will make someone's life marvelous. The key, listen, the key is not running around. The key is staying. Martha, you are worried and offended about many things, but one thing is needful. Oh God, I should have had five children now. Don't you know he can give you one child that is like a nation? Oh God, I've been crying about that job. When we talk about intimacy with God, many busy people think it's a waste of time. No, no, no. Look, I teach us some. No. No. If I followed that route, I would have been a failure today. A big failure. I'm not ashamed. You are the power in me. You are the fire at work in me. You are my ever-present helper, Holy Spirit. Ah. How do you stand and look at someone with a growth and take away that growth? Just like that? How do you look at someone who is dead and bring the person back to life? There are people here now with situations that doctors have ridden you off. Even a charm cannot solve it. You need a commodity that is not available in the earth. I told you the anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. In a few minutes from now, 10 years problems will just leave. Just like that. No, 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 no. That's what happens when you value him. That's what happens. That's what happens. Listen, when you honor a man of God, you don't just honor a body. 
you honor the sacrifice the sacrifice of alignment that has caused that man to be able to host certain dimensions of possibility listen to me all men are not equal no sir it's, it's a very harsh statement but it's the truth we are equal in Christ but our sacrifices and the election of grace has separated men to cadres based on the possibilities they can host ignoring that reality will be to the doom of a man the Holy Spirit we are going to begin to pray but I, 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 I just four things the Holy Spirit you don't know him you are in trouble you will be faced by too many things that your age cannot solve you didn't study everything you had a degree in an area having a degree in engineering or in medicine is not having a degree in wisdom no sir that information is too small to define the quality of your life ministry you need him you want to succeed in life you don't just need information you need a person hallelujah holy spirit it's grace and glory i trust that god will initiate people into that dimension of grace of intimacy with the holy spirit hallelujah yes the holy spirit is speaking to me and he's saying there are seven people here right now that he wants to call like a call into intimacy seven people seven people seven people shalabran iskala shabras kele prahas call your people oh god sun initiation into a dimension of intimacy the sister outside for he will be real to you real to you by his spirit this is not an issue of jamboree it's not an issue of feeling anointed it's working with a person it will make your life a wonder a wonder a wonder he will make your life a wonder he will not just give you anointing he will walk with you Walk with you. So you become an effulgence of that grace. Then you can say that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving me your son and living your spirit in your work in my life is done I thank you oh my father for giving be your son and leave your spirit your word on earth please sit down if you can the third thing that you must know Is you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom please I want you to be very sensitive we'll soon arise to pray sensitive ah, I just saw something jumping out of a lady jumping out of a lady let it be the end of it let it be the end of it. Let it be the end of it.
forever faithful towards me. You'll always provide for me. Praise your mercy towards me. Praise your way. allow the Holy Spirit flow something is happening now the Lord is showing me a map you know this happens and I'm seeing Southern Kaduna Southern Kaduna right now the anointing is touching Southern Kaduna people Southern Kaduna this is what I see in the spirit Southern Kaduna Southern Kaduna this is what I see in the spirit you're from that place an unction an unction I see a map in the spirit, Southern Kaduna. Let the hand of God step into that dimension. It's not a miracle, it's a sign and wonder. It's a demonstration of a dimension of the spirit. Everyone from Southern Kaduna comes under the influence of this grace. Southern Kaduna. Shabrakatos kelabrande katai. Lekatekos sotopadia. Lift them, O oh God. I hear my spirit lifting. Lifting. Lifting, he's raising you, raising you by his spirit, raising you. There is an unction that makes this possible, raising you by his spirit. I hope I'll be able to finish this. The mysteries of the kingdom that's the third thing that you must seek to know not just the word of God not just Rema the mysteries there is a lady in overflow three one is here two is the one by the road three is the one by the empty land there is a lady overflow three the anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming upon her please I want I want her to come overflow three I'm seeing like an arrow right from this building right down there please sit down let's hurry up so that we can do a quick walk there are so many people you must access the mysteries of the kingdom everybody say mysteries a mystery is a secret code of operation the kingdom of god operates based on systems and you see these mysteries contained in them the revelations of God the revelations of God alongside the dimensions of his power I've taught us here that there are two dimensions of God's power the first dimension of God's power is enshrined in mysteries and principles the second dimension of God's power is enshrined in a relationship two dimensions of God's power so you don't have to be born again to experience the first dimension the moment a principle is consistent with the character of God it will release a dimension of the power of God like tithing like sowing and reaping like being responsible like mentorship all of these are principles in the kingdom that are backed up by God's own character you must access the principles of the kingdom therein lies the key to your dominion it is a terrible thing to be in the face of life and not know what to do you must know what to engage for the outcomes you desire can you tell me you understand the mystery that governs restoration you know restoration is a possibility in the kingdom but what is the code of operation that is responsible for releasing that dimension of possibility because the Bible lets us know that both the years and even substances that a man loses can come back. But do you understand that there is a system in the kingdom that can make that possible? Are we together? Do you understand that there is a system in the kingdom that can make a sick person healthy? 
Yes, you know that divine healing is a possibility. But what controls it? Laying on of hands? No. No. Laying on of hands is just a channel. The inner workings is the spiritual understanding that backs that. Are we together now? You have to understand. The power of God is released through light. Remember the scripture Habakkuk. There was the hiding place of his power. Are we together? When you understand that, you don't have to lay hands on men to heal them. It doesn't even have to be a miracle service. The very understanding you have will respond to a man's need. The same way if I stand with you and I have, say, tuberculosis, you're a doctor. Doctor, if I have tuberculosis and you stand near me, must I believe in you to receive it? No, listen to me carefully. Are we together now? I'm standing close to you. It vetoes whether I agree with you. I can even be insulting you. But that's none of the business of the tuberculosis. Once there is proximity, it will enter you. You will live angry, but you must receive it. So if I can transfer sickness, why can I not transfer health? Are you seeing that now? That means I can stand close to you and transfer something from me to you. Life being the light of men. You see that? That's the concept of whatsoever is born of God. Not whosoever, whatsoever is born of God can overcome. Not by jacking yourself and understanding grants you access to that dimension in the spirit. Where you can walk in it. So you can come with a challenge, you can come with a sickness. Like some of you are here now trusting God. All kinds of impossible situations. They've told you it cannot be solved. They are right. Based on their understanding. This is a doctor. They are not wrong. Based on their understanding. But God's, God's manifold wisdom introduces possibilities. You see. He says with God. With God. Watch this. I've taught you. Alone it is impossible. But with God. With God. Alone I cannot call. But with my phone, with in partnership with God, all things, all things, all things are possible. I want you to look at the situation you came here with for the last time tonight. Because in the name of the Lord God of heaven, it will go. Hmm. My assignment tonight is to bring it face to face with the power that created the universe. Not the power that governs Nigeria. Not the power that governs UN. The power that created the heavens and the earth. For he upholds all things by the word of his power. Number three. That's it there. Mysteries. So number one, you must know God. Number two, that's redemption and everything that concerns God in the person of Jesus. Number two, you must understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The third thing, you must have access to the word. You must crave for accurate understanding. Number four, this is a mystery I believe that has been known by very few. And I truly believe with all my heart that is one of the things that God has anointed me to reveal is the mystery of the body. The fourth thing you must know if you want to excel is you must understand the mystery of of the body of Christ this strategy called the body of Christ the body of Christ is not just people the body of Christ many people say the body of Christ is not just a church there are people the body of Christ is not people the body of Christ is a strategy the only strategy capable of birthing the purposes of God is called ecclesia the body of Christ the body of Christ is not a people it's a strategy that's why he said, I will build it. I will build it. He didn't say, I will make it. I will build it. Like a formula, like a plan. And I will build it in such a way that it will be so formidable, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. 
there is a formation that the body of Christ is built it is so formidable the gate of hell can only touch members not the body the body was built by a system that cannot be touched by the gate of hell are we together never forget this many people have been robbed of the full dimension of the power of God first Corinthians 11 verse 30 remember for this cause many are weak many are sickly it is here for these causes there is only one reason why people are not able to rise to represent the fullness of God he said for this cause many are weak limited for this cause many are sickly and for this cause many sleep when was the last time you went for funeral and they told you somebody died because he did not discern the body that's what killed him please pay attention get my teachings discerning the body that whole series you have to listen if you are in ministry here or you are a church leader a deacon you have to listen to it if not you will never rise a body has thou prepared for me it was prepared to be used a formidable strategy that beats hell hands down it's called the body of christ everything is available in the body listen carefully so if it is not available in your life it is available in the body you have to learn that any possibility my life is not manifesting does not define the possibility of God it is only the possibility of my experience but that reality is available are we together now yes son of man can these bones live and Ezekiel said this is not a possibility within my frame of reality he says let me show you the body the body this body is a mystery it was built with a formula Christ being the chief cornerstone immediately after Christ two strange ministries the apostolic and the prophetic then the building rises you must follow that formula to be formidable it is the building of the body so when you see a man telling you you don't need any man in your life don't depend on any man it's only God they are sincere in that they are trying to balance human worship but that's a destructive revelation that will kill you because please listen to my message I'm just doing a quick recap because I'm telling you the things to study we'll begin to pray listen carefully I told you that there are mantles and there are systems remember the teaching yes a system represents a covenant with God that releases a dimension of his possibility within the dispensation of that civilization it's called a system so in every dispensation there is a way and manner God wants to be known and the way he advances that knowledge of him is through covenant your relationship with God your spiritual growth is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant so when God wants to release a dimension of him to a generation he finds a man listen he enters a covenant with that man that for as long as that man is alive he represents the spiritual system for releasing that possibility to that dispensation no one alive in that dispensation will taste of that dimension of God without believing or in alignment to that system this is how the kingdom is Abraham represents the system of the blessing the journey of a believer's blessing starts from him system are we together now Elijah represents God's system of purifying and preparing men for revival Elijah is not a man Elijah is a system I've taught you this the first manifestation of the spirit of Elijah was seen in Noah Elijah always precedes the great and terrible day of the Lord the moment there is a visitation upon a people Elijah must come that's why Elijah is still alive God's apostolic and prophetic system that prepares men for revival for the move of God is called Elijah It's a system the man Elijah died he's simply a man named after the system the system continues the Antichrist is a system not just a person you see that Peter a system that represents faith 
systems on earth today there are men who are not just human beings but systems when you trace the ministry of the holy spirit it can start from anywhere you choose upon the earth today right now it will end with Benny Hinn. you see that Benny Hinn is not carrying a mantle he's a system he represents that possibility no one will enter into the healing ministry without honoring what he represents to the body this is called the mystery of discerning the body Kenneth Copeland today represents God's system of faith and prosperity start from any point in the world you will start moving from mantle to mantle grace to grace and it will land back in him there are many systems like that you will never get this through prayer and fasting no matter how you pray God will lead you to those people he will give you encounters but he will lead you there is a system I have provided it is your alignment with that system that will produce those possibilities how much of the body do you know imagine what would have happened into your life now if you could discern the body discerning the body is different from destiny helpers destiny helpers are not systems destiny helpers they may not even be born again they are just people that God anoints to help you get to your destiny there are bodies terrestrial and there are bodies celestial he says even among the stars one different from another in glory not in shape in glory hallelujah praise the Lord if you had discernment for the body you probably would have been healed since if you had discernment for the body you probably would have been blessed since many people want to be rich but they criticize those who represent the systems that deliver that possibility there is no amount of prayer and fasting that will bring you into that possibility because when you scorn the grace that represents that reality you authorize that door to close it only opens to honor not even seats honor if your seat sowing is a communication of that honor then it opens are you seeing that now i can't criticize papa Ia Deboy and bishop oyedeko and one crowds and multitudes is impossible carry posters everywhere it will not happen there is a system this is not publicity it's a spiritual reality so in honor of what they represent i am authorized to access that reality that's why you are here tonight let me tell you something listen carefully you see this thing you call koinonia koinonia is not a ministry koinonia is a system you have to believe this it's a system it's not a movement it's not a fellowship it's not a group it's a system it's a system that has become a portal to release certain possibilities of God I, I want you to be very hopeful so that when you come you don't have to be afraid there is something about the atmosphere so no matter how far you are you have come to Mount Zion certain things happen this is not just some human bragging a man of God trying to shine his ministry no tonight you are standing face to face with possibilities that are contained in God please listen to me you're standing face to face with a reality that you now possess that can change your ministry your business your family is standing face to face with a challenge and what you're about to watch within the next few minutes is what I call the dominion power of light over darkness the invincibility of the wisdom and the might and the power of God over darkness it will happen at the speed of light converting your prayer request to a testimony it's not trying to believe a reality here and now hello him Adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done 
Hello, Kim Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, Kim Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be to make an altar call quickly right now everyone stand there are people here overflow one two three following us online in this place right now the bible says this life is in his son you don't hear about the son and receive life you meet the son there are people standing here men and women scattered around you are a pastor leader deacon gentleman lady old young rich poor regardless of your status jesus said ye must be born again there are people here who have not met jesus we have to do this very fast because there will be such an outpouring of the holy spirit in this place you are here inside and outside you have heard what i said and whilst i was speaking the spirit of god the one we so honor was beginning to minister to you that you must make your ways right with God and then you've been here and for some reason you've been one leg in and one leg out loved God was on fire but different things happened somewhere around your life and you're here probably standing inside and outside and wondering man of God can I join them most welcome I want to count one to five and um, now this is how we we'll do it I want you to come the first sets of people can come out when they come and here is full then all the others that come will just stand at their various overflows just close to your projector but I want to count one to five and I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain right now one quickly quickly run to Jesus from the depth of your heart you can keep standing you don't have to lie down or kneel down God bless you you don't have to kneel down, madam. You can stand. Quickly. Two. Don't think about it. Run to Jesus. And this life is in his son. And this life is in his son. And this life is in his son. 
man of God I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not join them quickly join them quickly I remember coming out for altar call one day but right now I'm not sure no if you are not sure you have to come out when a woman is pregnant she knows you are not sure join them something is wrong with what happened to you three are you coming apostle I'm trying to come out but my neighbor is stopping me we rebuke that spirit trying to stop you come out come to Jesus Jesus said if you are ashamed of me before men I will be ashamed of you before my father let this be the beginning of the miracle service for you I think we have enough people inside now every other person that comes just direct them to their various overflows outside those coming from outside you can wait there now in every moment I'm away Lord have your way Lord have your way me hallelujah madam look at me you, you love Jesus Christ come I'm seeing you you are not working well what's wrong with you What's wrong with her? Who brought her? Because I looked at you and I saw you limping and then I saw in the realm of the spirit severe pain. Come. What's wrong with you? From where are you? Program. So she now called me that I should come and attend the program. So For I have diabetes and ulcer. My back pain here from the back here down to my leg. Everything. Yes. I'm feeling the pain very well. That is why she asked me to come and do the program with you people here. So that is why I came here. Mommy, look at me. Every one of them. You heard what I said? Everyone will leave you here and you'll go back to Abuja. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. Of course, if it doesn't work, your sister will not ask you to come. Hallelujah. I'm going to lead you people to pray. Join them to pray. We're going to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ and all that devil will go. The ultimate cure is not the prayer for healing. The ultimate cure is Jesus. A man was brought to Jesus crippled and he says, Thy sins be forgiven. And people say, Ah, what is this? And Jesus said, Which is easier? Hi! That means to be healed is easier than to be saved. So it's not as easy it's not just recitation are we together mama i'll pray for you go back and join them those of you standing here the overflow lift your right hand and sincerely you are not reciting a point from the depth of your heart i want you to say this after me say lord jesus no some of you are crying but don't worry jesus sees your tears say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you i believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me you shed your blood for me you rose again for me and tonight I receive your life I receive your grace I receive your spirit I declare that I'm born again I'm a child of God in the name of Jesus victory is given to me over sin over the flesh and over the world in Jesus name please keep your hands lifted I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ the power of sin the power of the flesh and the world over you is broken right now I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the life of God is at work in you beginning from today the Lord transforms your life by his spirit in the name of Jesus Christ now I want you to do something for me very quickly please cooperate with all the people um, whether outside any of the overflows there is a gentleman waving his hands some um, of the uh, ushers there I want you to just follow them quietly and then give them your correct details very quickly this is so that we'll follow you up and then we'll get to see you so do that very very quickly very quickly madam I will pray for you you go and write your name and come back While we are waiting for them, please make sure we are going to be very fast. You see that our time is gone. So it's going to be a very quick walk. Very quick walk. We are going straight to the business of the night. 
and I want you to believe it doesn't take time it only takes God it doesn't take time it only takes God very very quickly very very quickly we're going to trust the Lord to please ushers coordinate them very quickly and uh, let's have them back because we want to pray now are we together everyone say after me in the name of Jesus please be serious in the name of Jesus I decree and I declare that every spirit every force every influence standing against God's word over my life I declare that you are under judgment tonight lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and pray everyone shala bras kadabaladia Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are always spirits behind the tragedies of men. Whether or not you know, it is there and until those influences are taken out of your life victory is far from your reach are we together number two I want you to decree and declare that the fire of God must fall upon every challenge you came here with say Lord visit it one by one until there is total victory don't let the challenge don't let the challenge limit you take your eyes away from it and pray Are you praying inside and outside? Thank you, Jesus. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can, no one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can, no one will. Lift your hands everyone just lift your hands and be silent such a strong anointing in this place tonight lift your hands and just be silent please I'm seeing two numbers five and one and the Lord is saying there are 51 people here 51 people he's bringing massive deliverance to their families I want you to bring them out 51 people don't shout don't do nothing just keep your hands the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands and the power of God that unction for deliverance will move like wildfire all through the overflows right now I stretch my hands in the name of the Lord God whose I am and whom I serve right now I release the ministry of angels Mighty deliverance right now. Bring them out. Shalabrakataya. Break it to Shubrataka Labraska Labriata. Shapraskata Brakatele Katia Labas. So break it Ali Praska Bariata. Embrekoto Shoto Pareketa. The 
fire of God is visiting individuals for their families. I see fire burning. That's what I'm seeing. Bring them out. Just keep your hands lifted. The angel of his presence moving inside and outside. Moving inside and outside. Please quickly, let's have them. Overflow one. I see a strange activity of angels. Strange deliverance. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty in God. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Keep your hands lifted. Malekete pekete la kaya. Ay 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 ay. Mighty on your throne. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. Help that lady, please. You are mighty on your throne. Break for. Down fountains of the deep and weep. Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Keep your hands lifted. I'm seeing snakes. That's what I'm seeing. Just flying up. Snakes. I'm seeing many ladies being delivered from this influence. Right now, I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. Mateketa. I put the word of God upon this prophecy in the name of Jesus I release upon it the power to perform those influences in the name of Jesus I release judgment 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 upon every strange influence limiting the life of God's people Break forth down fountains of the deep and weep and weep and weep at all. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. Jesus, I'm seeing gates, gates with chains. One shout is what will bring that gate down. Are you ready? Just a shout of the name of Jesus. One, two, three. I open those gates. Be open by the unction of the Spirit. Gates be open. Ephata be open. The gate must open. Tonight is a miracle service. I prophesied the two lift gate be open. The two lift gate. Many of you don't know what is happening in the realm of the spirit. I tell you, I see gates, gates of destinies, gates of possibilities that are being held by witchcraft, gates over families. No progress, no results. I come tonight with an apostolic and a prophetic anointing. Gates be open. Gates be open. Gates be open. Gates be open. Listen. Listen to me. 
a gate is what gives a man access access into a place access out of a place the bible says to open the doors of prison there are men who are moving but they are under prison there's nothing hear me you may be here listening to me there's nothing you do that works no matter how you try seek advice it will not work no matter what you do you are not bad you are not lazy but there is a spirit but right now lift your hands in the name of jesus one more time i come against the spirit that stand as gatekeepers over the victory of people over the life of people at the count of three i want you to shout that name the name that is a key that opens the gate one two three i open it i open it i open it online outside i command it to open i command it to open locked by ancestry locked by divination locked by necromancy and projection manipulation of the constellations i command in the name of he that holds the key of david i command that door be open that no power can shut be sensitive tonight the spirit of god is moving one of the ushers one of the ushers you are an usher but the unction of the spirit help her visiting your family visiting your family hallelujah hallelujah i'm seeing a lady quickly there's no time to speak our time is gone we have to pray for the sick but i'm seeing a lady you have two sisters two of them are barren they are married no children please where are you it's part of your prayer request you are wearing a black dress you are the one come Hello, Hima Tonga, thy kingdom come, I will be blessed. Ah, there's witchcraft in your family. Look at me. Come, you are a great lady, but there is terrible witchcraft in your family. There is a lady. Again, the Lord is opening my eyes. I don't know why this happens. I'm seeing a map, Benway, Benway, Benway people get ready, Benway, 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 I see Benway and the Lord says stretch your hands and bring deliverance to men in Benway, I stretch my hands right now, the anointing of the spirit visiting people, Benway, 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 by the spirit of God, by the spirit of God, hear me, and I'm hearing in my spirit, break the covenant of motherhood. I don't know what this means but this is something that has to do with a covenant involving women i arrest it right now in the name of jesus i see fire dropping right now people from benway you are from benway you come under this influence please help that benway benway the spirit of the living god the spirit of the living god traveling to benway breaking covenant I speak to the soil of that land. Release the destinies tied with you. Listen. What I'm seeing is not good. The Lord is taking me to a vision. And I'm standing. And I'm seeing black ropes around trees. This is Otuko. Black ropes tied around trees. And the Lord tells me that the destiny of men were tied to those trees in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands. Shabreketas Kabatia Man At the count of three, may the fire that the God of Elijah commanded, I command it right now upon every shrine, every activity of darkness. In the name of Jesus, let it come upon you now. Let it come upon you now. 
let it come upon you now hallelujah the supernatural I've taught you operates only in partnership with five elements listen without one or more of these elements the supernatural cannot find expression Guy, I'm seeing a wild this is a serpent I'm looking at this person and I'm not seeing a human being again I'm seeing a serpent I stretch my hands the Bible says for the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not now listen carefully five elements of the supernatural number one is light the supernatural cannot find expression until it can use the medium of light number two the air sound the supernatural cannot find expression until there is a medium of sound number three the earth the earth is a universal point of contact every living thing makes contact with it number three are we together number four water the mystery that bears witness water is not an entity water is history water is a memory bank of the realm of the spirit contained within it are more mysteries than we understand number five fire a mystery entity that does not run away from anything and yet consumes everything purifies and destroys can make and kill the only personality with the quality of fire is God can make a life and destroy it would destroy another thing and in it lift another thing purify gold and destroy the impurities I want us to use one of the elements of the supernatural because everyone is standing on the ground I want to pray for you the Lord is asking me to break delay please just follow me we are coming to the sick people but just follow me tonight let's walk circumspectly I'm seeing people whose feet have been tied down they cannot move you are here no matter what you do there is no progress this is the story of your family look at me the Lord wants to visit you first even before your family your two sisters they are married no child are you married you are not married we have to pray I don't know if you believe what I'm telling you but God is raising you to be a savior in your family believe this thing no you may not look like it but it is the spirit of Deborah but first and foremost you must be delivered first God is not finished with her I command that devil go there is no hiding in his presence in the name of Jesus Christ hold my hands my dear in the name of Jesus the Lord God whom I serve I command the reign of witchcraft as I hold you right now over your sisters over your life and over your family I command them to be broken right now I release upon you grace for restoration in the name of Jesus and I pray for you that grace of Deborah that causes women to rise with the strength of men I release that grace upon you I want you to go and tell your sisters the Lord brings a visitation to them even as he did to Hannah at Shiloh the Lord comes for them with strange visitations in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ now all those under the anointing I command the spirits any spirit that has been located by God must leave the victims therefore in the name of Jesus and at the count of three you know my voice I represent his majesty at the count of three you must let them go now and forever one two three be gone go out of their lives destinies now and forever out of their lives out of their destinies I prophesy recovery I prophesy recovery I prophesy recovery for when a thief is caught he's made to pay back tenfold I command recovery in the name of Jesus let them go there is no hiding for his light shines upon you in the name of Jesus Christ listen if there is any project you are involved in lift your hand any project business project building project please just lift your hands before I pray 
we pray the prayer that will release speed projects I'm standing and I'm seeing an angel of the Lord walking across this place and I'm standing here and he's saying I should stretch my hands here there is a visitation that is coming for the people here therefore I stretch my hands Lord your will be done I don't know those who you are bringing perfection to them right now in the name of Jesus I release that unction and that grace everyone within this vicinity let there be supernatural deliverances and supernatural miracles help them in the name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ now everyone is standing I want to pray for you please listen there is such a thing as advancement in a man's life is not a doctrine it's an experience where a man can make progress spiritually financially business wise if you are in a position for a long time it's a sign that something is wrong are we together it says ye have come past this mountain long enough then it tells you the formula the door is in the north it said turn northwards turn northwards you have come past this mountain long enough I want you to stand on the ground I see physical fire rising and sweeping consuming people's feet some of you as this is happening you will hear the sounds of physical chains literally physical chains this will happen I want us to shout the name of Jesus three times that's what the Holy Ghost is telling me I will lead you and you will shout it the third time the chains of delay and stagnation will will break open many of you physically physically you feel it happening thank you Jesus let the word of God come upon this prophecy are you ready now number one are you ready number two now I want you to get ready that grace that came upon Elijah and caused him to run overtaking the chariot of Ahaz speed and advancement is coming on people right now are you ready shout Jesus receive it now receive it now let the earth deliver to your destiny the keys of advancement I command you to advance I command you to move forward I break limitations I break limitations I command advancement outside advancement the overflows advancement may that anointing hit you advancement 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 in the name of Jesus the son of the living God no power can stop you our God is greater our God is stronger God you are higher than many other. help me our God is here awesome in power Stretch your hands towards me. Don't lift it up. Stretch it towards me. There is, there is going to be an activation of strange gifts. Strange gifts. Strange gifts. Strange gifts. Strange gifts. The time for impartation will come. But fire is living. And it's coming upon people and the Lord said let them stretch their hands 
in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands back to you in the name of Jesus gifts 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 don't man gifts don't man gifts where is it I call it forth now don't man gifts don't man gifts you may not know it's there I'm not talking of the gifts of the spirit I'm talking of potentials gifts gifts I stir it up right now like a well I command it like the axe head I command it to float right now I command it to float right now gifts that will bring you honor gifts so toko toko to gifts hallelujah hallelujah gifts there is a lady I'm looking at you now in the realm of the spirit you are dressed in something that looks like orange like the house are dressing from your head to who is that who is that come from this room Jesus praise what's your name Veronica from where I came from Abuja you came from Abuja as I stood here I was hearing your prayer and you were saying Lord let this man of God locate me and the Lord is saying I should tell you that two things now number one is captivity and reproach is being rolled away from your life that's the first thing that is happening to you captivity and reproach captivity and reproach inside inside the main auditorium from where people sit in front count nine lines nine rows one two three four five six seven eight nine the power of God is coming on somebody on that row right now inside inside it's a strange miracle coming for that person the ninth row supernatural manifestation of the power of God my sister what do you want the Lord to do in your life uh -uh. you are just generalizing huh I'm looking at you and then I'm seeing your heart and I'm seeing should I say it do you believe you can are you married huh where's your husband did you come with him what do you want the Lord to do for him see this man is your real prayer point. that's that's you want the Lord to honor him and what what is he doing now I'm seeing him leaving that place oh, to another place that has been your desire go and tell him that a man of God has prophesied to him that he's going to leave that place supernaturally supernaturally and that he should stop wasting his time over the person he's calling all the time to help him that's not where his help will come from go and tell him that the Lord said he can raise help anywhere in the name of Jesus Christ I pray amen and amen there is a lady here in this room in this um, place I'm hearing grace please let's hurry up quickly so I can leave this place we have to pray for the sick I'm hearing grace grace who is that you are down at that side grace who is that wearing red grace that's okay grace your name is grace this is not this is is it my Muna? is it Maimuna or something I'm hearing a name Maimuna 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 I wish we had time today but we have to pray for the sick I want us to leave this very fast because I'm going to counsel well just leave her I found a person but but you come my dear I want to pray who is this no 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 it's not just any grace I pray for you my dear lift your hands God wants to visit your family there are four people here a very strange unction for revelation and teaching is coming upon you now no 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 four of you right now a strong power is hitting you right now just in this this place outside I don't know what it is about this place maybe the miracle services will start coming here now there is there's real faith in this place my dear I end it now I end it now in the name of Jesus Christ keep your hands on her stomach I end it now I command that reproach taken from your life in the name of Jesus don't come out for social reasons but I'm seeing a lady here you have suffered a very terrible infection this is a, a woman issue a terrible infection this thing 
you have treated it and done everything you know to do but it has refused to go this is witchcraft it's not just a normal infection you have spent your money but right now the lord is saying i should prophesy to you that it comes to an end complete end right now in the name of jesus christ complete end i stretch my hands four people right now here in this row lord where are they one is a lady three are gentlemen step into that dimension that's right help them thank you jesus hold on there is a mother here god wants to wipe yes madam who is a gala here hold on you are a gala from where from where Oppo. where is that is there a place like that in the gala land huh in kogi state so that you don't come and tell us lies if, if you are not from there just wait there is your turn to come from lift your hands i'm seeing an attack on your life and your family and the lord is too free madam where is your child did you come with your child There's no time to waste, please. I'll just pray for you so that we can go in the name of witchcraft. Now, on you right now. Jesus Christ, in the Jesus Christ, lift your hand. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it in the name of Jesus. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is bringing into my life strange testimonies lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice those outside are you praying lift your voice and begin to pray kai one of the things listen hold on i'm seeing now i want you to believe it i just looked up and i started hearing the cry of i see babies just fill the room listen carefully I just lifted I wanted to move and I just lifted my eyes and the Lord told me that one of the major miracles he's doing tonight is giving people children if you are standing in for barrenness whether you are in any overflow please come in I want to minister to you by myself barrenness only barrenness please husband and wife if you are standing for barrenness except you are standing in for someone if you are standing alone you must be married praise God if you are standing alone you must be married in the name of Jesus may that grace come upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit please stand you can go you can go Pastor Alpha now we are going to pray and while they are doing that let's buy time ushers move around all the overflows make sure you collect the request of everybody I notice overflow three there are few people attending to them there so let's have people you see why we need more ushers and we need more people say after me father, father. everyone shout it father, father. We, receive we receive your visitation, your visitation. in the name of jesus name of we, receive we receive miracles signs, signs. And, wonders. and wonders now please accept they ask you you don't have to tell them what is wrong don't worry the hand of god is here to bless you in the name of jesus christ father we give you all the praise those online i want you to connect by faith and trust the power of god to touch you we have very few minutes to do this and in the name of jesus will be done no matter what the issue is as we touch you start checking yourself you can register your testimony we'll take it on friday whether you are standing in for someone don't worry the power of god is there to touch you in the name of jesus father we give you all the praise do you know why I came here? Because I saw that this woman, your issue is not just healing. Hold on. I saw the, her holding pictures and a passport. And then I'm looking at it. And I saw a plane. Is it something like you were staying outside the country? Is that true? Yes, sir. Because I'm seeing a woman, a plane, bringing you. Is that true? Uh-uh. 
and the Lord is opening my eyes I'm seeing another vision I'm seeing a quarrel between you and a man like your husband and that man drove you yes sir he drove yes sir from where from abroad where is abroad Qatar from where where is he this is you God, yes. ah. one week oh my god this is a baby look at me why did he drive you away you see why prophecy is powerful look at this woman come madam I looked at these things and the Lord told me that this woman needs help I know I'm taking time but let's attend madam don't cry it's okay where were you before no other man we are together in our blood we are together I, were you married yes sir you are from where Benway State sir you are from Benway yes sir you see I told you what God was saying about Benway you, you married him and went abroad yes sir then what happened he said as you come back my paper is having issue not knowing that he went and married secretly from my community so he lady, married another woman yeah from my same community sir he's staying abroad with her Yes, sir. He drove you away with the baby. Yes, sir. No, he, uh, he drove me when the pregnancy was one week. <laughs> Did he know you were pregnant? No, sir. Immediately I took it. He now said I should come see, back. Man, listen. This this is what we, we keep saying again and again. Please listen to me. Now I don't mean no disrespect, but you see why ladies will tell you people. To marry people who are born again not just people who have money huh don't let anybody just come and show you one shoe one bag and just carry you around like that it must be godly look at what this man did for this woman one week and left her with this innocent child so where are you staying now i'm staying out in abuja so my it's sister. from abuja you came yes sir what do you want God to do for you? I want God to bring him back for me, sir. He married another woman. Yes, sir. She knew you were his wife. Yes, sir. And she still came and married. Yes, my dad is also yes, sir. Where's your dad? Daddy. Please come, sir. Oh, he cannot walk. After my marriage, I now send stroke to him, sir. He's from okay, Benway too. Yes, sir. Why am I seeing light leaving you to this man? Come. What's your relationship with her? He's my stepbrother. I'm a first, uh, I mean, stepbrother, the firstborn of the family. You are the firstborn? Yes, sir. From where? From a business state. You are suffering. Bye. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Nothing is working your life. Yes, sir. At all. You need the hand of God. Look at your father. Look at this man. Look at this dear man. You see this this brothers and sisters believe it or not is what witchcraft looks like are you seeing this whether you are in Qatar or wherever if that spirit is not destroyed this is what it will do because I stood and I looked at her and I saw a plane carrying a woman but she didn't look if you see this woman does she look like somebody who has gone abroad I'm not insulting you you can see that this woman was not even treated well suffered with the man now we went abroad and sent her back when this baby now if we decide to carry this baby and take care of this baby when this baby becomes responsible the man will now call the court and come and say he wants his child back then they will now accuse men of God and accuse everybody and say everybody is stupid you are using the baby to make to get power you see why sometimes we avoid these things it's not because we cannot help people honestly it's because sometimes the media right now are experts at stigmatizing men of god you do anything to try to help this baby now you'll be in trouble are we together help me you're the god of awesome one praise to the your power if God tells me to ask him one thing 
I will say, Lord, please take me in a vision to ancient Egypt. I want to see the display of the power of God through Moses. I just want to be led like Ezekiel and watch and watch Moses in that temple and watch Pharaoh look at him and watch the, the stench of witchcraft and a man comes immune for Moses was not afraid for himself he was on assignment Kai. these people were strange men no wonder Hebrews said the earth was not worthy of them when you mention those we think the earth is not worthy of now we mention Mother Teresa Mandela the earth is worthy of them there are people the Bible says the earth is not worthy in other words they did the earth a favor by passing they were not ordinary men when we get to heaven we will see the constituents of their design they only carried bodies that were young there had to be an ancient mystery inside them and the bible says on the count of that the earth is not worthy of them we shared a few things that would help us let me run through them and then we'll finish up we didn't finish last week and my assignment is to finish it today and then we'll pray that number one the first key to advancing and preserving the move of God in a territory is a system of consistent prayer everybody say prayer and not just random need driven prayer the ministry of warfare and intercession must never go out of fashion if we want to preserve the move of God in a territory the ministry of intercession and warfare now i know that we come from different places and we all have different ideas about warfare and the rest but let me tell you one truth based on the authority of the word of god the bible never left us in the dark as to the fact that territories have controlling powers apportioned to them and nobody prevails over a territory until you sustain capacity to subdue the powers that control a territory when you see people thrive in a territory listen carefully it is not because the power of darkness is not there it's because they have sustained a system to keep them at bay are we together let me tell you one big secret about koinonia listen to me if you find yourself in this place that you come and sit down with koinonia half of your miracle has already happened believe me i know this sounds like pride forgive me if it sounds so that you were able to successfully leave your house if God opens your eyes to see the warfare that happens have you not seen people come and sit down and immediately praise and worship starts they feel like easing themselves to go no there are spirits walking behind the scene because someone's miracle is about to come someone's life is about to change all of a sudden a stranger starts calling somebody just when prayer is about to start no sir they are not normal every service in koinonia is warfare that's why we never come into any service casual we start praying from the week the prayer department is praying every department is praying i'm praying everyone is praying and when we come you see the things that the power of god does and you are wondering no satan is also watching he is shocked at how he's resisted are we together yes, sir. you are not going to build that house just because you think you have money when all the economics are ready the realm of the spirit must be taken care of are we together just because a brother sees you and he likes you and you go back carelessly thinking you are fine is a is a joke in this wicked world that we live in you lie down to sleep and a strange woman appears to you and say in case they have not told you let me tell you that i've been here for a long time I am the one who has stopped all the 11 ladies in your family from marriage and not even you will do it and you get up and say well it's just a, a a nice dream and you take orange juice and you find out that the day the brother said he wants to see your people his business scattered overnight his life scattered overnight one ear refused to hear and the guy says no i've not even married you and this is happening and he just finds his way quietly but those who understand that every territory must have men and women who settle realities in the realm of the spirit you engage strong warfare and intercession 
at all times not just when you have a dream about danger sometimes when you have that dream it may be too late the bible says to be instant in season he spake a parable to the end that men ought always 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 to pray one of the greatest assets you can teach your child is the ministry of prayer and intercession that's why i love it when our children join us when we are praying let them join they may be playing and mimicking the tongues just leave them one day you will be surprised to hear that they laid hands on their classmates in the play class the power of god does not care which hand whether the hand is the hand of a young child or an adult the moment that hand is aligned the power of god will flow through it are we together number two i taught us that the second key to preserving the ordinances of god in a territory is the regular convergence of believers the regular convergence of believers within that territory believers must have systems of regular convergence for the purpose of training for the purpose of building for the purpose of mentoring and for the purpose of receiving the current blueprint of the spirit he that hath an ear not everybody has that ear let him hear what the spirit saith what he's saying not what he said one of the worst things that can happen to you is to be where God was you must follow him if he moves this way that is your destiny if he moves this way that is your destiny the moment you isolate yourself from him then he's no longer a shepherd and all of a sudden things start going wrong in your life number three an open display of real miracles signs and wonders we cannot preserve the emphasis listen 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 believers hear me this has nothing to do with being called into the miracle ministry if you want men to have memories of the moves of God there must be supernatural manifestations of the power of God beyond the four walls of the church healings and miracles testimonies per second per second that remind people that God is alive are we together someone wants to laugh at God and he just sees a car that should have a ghastly motor accident and God delivered them immediately the person remembers you see him say thank God oh thank God when a when a territory forgets God then there are hardly experiences that keep him in their minds we must emphasize God through miracles signs and wonders and keep people aware of him when you see coca-cola every day is enshrined in your mind you know how coke looks like educated or not the moment they say coca-cola we all know it that's how it must be so that even an unbeliever outside when he hears people singing god is a miracle worker he won't lie that he does not understand the meaning of that song he may not be born again but we have institutionalized the power of god in a territory it becomes impossible for people to mock god there may be critics but they know the truth jesus walked upon the earth he moved in such dimension of power and grace although the scribes criticized him in the day nicodemus came by night john 3 and said rabbi we know he didn't say i know all of us those critics we know the truth we know that thou art a man sent from god what convinced them for no man can do these things not say these things no man can do these things i write to you all excellent theophilus of all that jesus began both to do and teach not teach alone do and teach we're a generation of a performance there must be a performance and the performance must be beyond falling down results results that defy science results that create arguments result that stops an unbeliever from sleeping in the night and he sees this every time god is revealed it's a message that pounds in the heart of someone who does not know god it forces men to acknowledge 
that there is a God because they cannot explain the synergy behind that miracle when people begin to say there is no God it is because the sons of light have refused to show them God are we together remember Paul and Silas and the episode of the jailer the Bible says they were jailed tied hands and foot and the Bible says they prayed and they sang suddenly there was an earthquake an earthquake came and rattled the entire prison and then the Bible says that the chains broke from their hands and the Bible says that while they were singing the praise and the worship the jailers all of them had them I'm sure they were laughing stupid people useless prisoners you won't sit down in one place and while they were singing all of a sudden there was a physical earthquake the hands the chains were bound and then all of a sudden the Bible says all doors were open and it was time for Paul and Silas to go out and the jailer wanted to kill himself because he was tantamount to death and he said no you don't have to rush calm down we are here that man got born again immediately one miracle will answer 1,000 questions all these useless explanations we keep giving let me tell you every critic already knows the truth explaining to them is a waste of time you answer by a superior performance of the power the grace the wisdom of God not to make a name not to build an empire but to reveal Jesus to make him manifest number four and that's where we stopped last week intentional mentorship of younger believers not young believers we are young younger believers if the ordinances of God must be preserved in a territory there must be an intentional system of mentorship that raises the younger believers and it starts right from nursery class primary school etc etc there must be a system of intentional mentorship when we have a generation of people who are ignored do you know by the time an average young man gets to 15 largely he or she their lives have been wrecked beyond repair are we together we must be able to capture people from the ages of these little children and show them God let their lingua franca be Jesus and Jesus only. We mentor them. Gone are the days where people commit themselves to investing in children ministry and young people. Society has tainted people. The moment you focus on children, they say it's because you're a young man. And in, in a bid to manage that embarrassment of not looking small or a child, we have ignored them. And Satan says, if you ignore them, I'm, I'm available. More than available. There must be a mentorship of younger ministers younger ministers they must be mentored to understand but the only challenge i have with mentorship is that the mentor himself must have an encounter with god otherwise we are going to mentor our limitations to people it will be a transference of limitations there are many people is because of mentorship they stop believing god there are dimensions of god they would have believed but a mentor created a theology out of his limitation and forced them to believe it and raped their potentials for entering superior dimensions in the spirit. There were people who began to have visions, dreams, prophetic encounters until they met a so-called mentor and he told them it was diabolism and they casted it out and closed the door against the Holy Spirit. Not everybody can mentor. Being in ministry for a long time does not qualify you for mentorship. You can be doing the wrong thing in ignorance for many years. It's an election of grace. God must train people with a track record and a testimony of walking with the Holy Spirit. Number five. The fifth way that the ordinances of God, the program of God is preserved over territories is influence. 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 God must find people in high places that are in places of influence enough to supervise the policies that preserve God in a territory. Are we together? For a very long time, the church has been indoctrinated to resent influence. 
we have been indoctrinated into believing that every time people aspire to rise to prominent positions to sit upon the notable places of several spheres of influence is a proof of carnality so we create we have created a theology that you either be carnal and influential or spiritual and private no sir no sir jesus was a man of influence what is influence the ability to mold your understanding into people without using force the ability to compel people to buy into your beliefs to buy into your your paradigms to buy into your perceptions without using force you use results Acts chapter 10 Acts chapter 18 the verse of emphasis is verse 10 but for reference purposes you can put verse 7 to verse 18 but let's look at just verse 10 for the sake of time help us media verse 10 Acts chapter 18 and verse 10 It says, for I am with you, and no one will attack or hurt you. What is the reason? For I have many people in this city. There are many people who call upon my name in this city. And the fact that I have several people is an advantage to my agenda. Are we together now? That when God has many people in places of influence, it was the influence of Joseph of Arimathea that brought down the body of Jesus. It was not prayer that brought Jesus from the cross. He would have died and remained there on the cross. But a man of influence, Joseph of Arimathea, who had business concerns with Herod, told him that, look, I want the body of Jesus. And on grounds of that partnership and friendship, he said, all right, no problem. He will be buried in my own tomb. Influence played a role in our salvation we have entertained a weak and a beggarly church with no voice policies and policies come up from an antichrist government men and women who do not know God neither do they have respect for his ordinances they are the ones that sit in the high places and spirits manipulate them to making life difficult for the church and we are here praying in tongues, throwing ourselves from pillar to post and rejecting influence. There are two principal ways the kingdom advances. One is evangelism, two is influence. None of them can replace another. Evangelism and influence. The gospel is a message and it's an ideology. It's not a message alone. The message of the gospel is the revelation of the love of the Father demonstrated in the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus and the response of man to that act of love and benevolence the result of which is the life of God imparted into man that is the message of the gospel but there is the ideology of the gospel a system that seeks to enthrone Christ and his value systems first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human existence Here's the great commission. Go ye into, not go ye around. Enter a system, cosmos, the social system, the mountains that represent the spheres of influence that govern the cultures of people. Let me have representations there. He says, do not be afraid. Why? No one will hurt you because I have many people there. When the righteous are in power, the people rejoice it says when the wicked perish there are shouts of joy when the vice chancellor of a university calls upon the name of the Lord it's an advantage for the advancement of the kingdom within that territory if the wealthiest man in Zaria calls upon the name of the Lord it's an advantage to the growth of the church I believe in influence I never will reject influence God has blessed me with influential people, some fathers of faith, some great people connected to this ministry directly or indirectly. Great men of influence scattered across the military, scattered across business, scattered across every mountain. I will never be indoctrinated to rejecting them because their relevance will show. 
when you want to ward the gates of hell they will come physically through men and god there is only a limit there are certain doors that will never open for you you need somebody already in there who has the purposes of the kingdom are we together there are many cities that refuse to sell land for believers but certain men of influence and certain pastors that God has granted influence will come to that land and a call will come directly. Oga governor, Oga lands and survey coordinator, release 10 hectares now for this church. Their advantage can increase the economy of this land. And all they say is yes sir. May God put someone around your destiny that knows God and has influence. Influence can shorten your journey. All this prayer and fasting we pray out of unbelief is because we are using one system of the kingdom to remedy another. Influence can answer a lot of prayers. Are we together? Influence can answer a lot of prayers. A lot of prayers. God's people must find their way to the high places of life to represent his interest in the places that matter. In the places that matter. Imagine if Michael Jackson ever said Jesus. He would win more souls than many crusades combined. Whether the Jesus was a mistake or it was intentionally so. Are we together? I shared with us last week that Islam is the fastest growing religion in Europe. They have never packed a stadium for a crusade. They are using one weapon that we have ignored. Influence. 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 We live in a world that is governed by influence. Brothers and sisters, we need it. Whoever has influence sets the rules and forces you to work with the rules. I made up my mind that I will never pastor a spiritual and a weak people spirituality and influence can go hand in hand and that's the template i've chosen so i'll continue to pray for you and teach you that you rise and become great people in ministry here at the level that god has brought us there is hardly anything we want at this level that we cannot get because of the power of influence almost everything we will need at this level is a call away a call away a call away if it's military might, a call away. Are we together? If it's some kind of legal stance, it's a call away. The power of influence. If anybody comes and tries to bully the ministry and oppress the lives of people, God has strategically placed people in areas of influence to do that. Influence is important. You reject it, you will pay for it. Are we together? You reject it, you will pay for it. We need influence every time. We need influence everywhere. If there is an emergency case right now and we need attention in the hospital, by the grace of God, he has given us influence to call some of the highest people that God can grant grace and make sure that we mobilize assistance for people. You see, believers are not taught how to live in a socioeconomic environment. We are taught how to live in church, but we are not taught the wisdom for living. And it is the lack of this understanding that destroys us. A day will come, you will need help. And ministry, the work of God will suffer greatly without it. It will require influence. Every week you see people here, you know, and, and so on and so forth. Have people, the bosses that come from almost if not 100% of all the drivers they are not Christians but by 9 o'clock they come and wait here all of them and they are watching the meeting it's called influence are we together don't reject influence it is when influence is mismanaged that it can destroy people there are people here by the grace of God and with all humility they have gotten jobs overnight because of influence Oh, how are you, sir? There are students who had no business graduating, but influence took them and they just left. Because you know somebody that can favor and help them. 
hello sir please can you help a b c d there are people who have gotten admission because of influence there are people who have gotten promotion because of influence the church has become grounded because we have hated and rejected influence and we keep praying the answer leaves the realm of the spirit but the system that makes it manifest influence being one of them is largely ignored we must receive grace for influence hallelujah there are people who have been at the police station and the situations around their lives would have been grievous but because of the power of influence one call officer inspector i'm the one calling a b c d e f g and it's, it's over unbelievers understand this you can catch a criminal a capon take him to prison in two hours one call makes one call makes one call abroad returns one call back to nigeria and the person is out walking on the street and then a sincere believer who loves god but is ignorant of the systems of god is kept and locked god must give us influence in the name of jesus christ god has helped us as a ministry i tell you the truth and i say it without humility god has given us influence and we have we have honored our way into those influence are we together it matters you have influence to the degree to which men rise to remedy any challenges that stand before you it will happen in ministry i remember there was i think a, a few months or so ago or weeks there was someone that wanted to just make some trouble because of the overflow and all of that and before all those troubles will rise people arose from everywhere and said no way no way you are you are a joker we have been blessed beyond imagination that's the power of influence i never had to go there to find out what happened influence many of you may never know but there's a gentleman now serving five years five months or so in the prison during one of the night vigils he wanted to steal a car somewhere there but because we had influence and access to military might they were caught and apprehended and handled and i didn't even know it was the next day while we we're on our way to the trip the protocol department told me oh they got intelligence let me tell you something if there is a crisis god forbid in zaria within one hour we have built a system of immunity we are not stupid people with in less than five minutes whatever needs to be communicated to every koinonia member will reach the person and the relevant structures for military might and influence will be put we are not stupid people we are living in a we will the horse is prepared for battle safety is of the lord but the horse will not sleep you are living in a wicked world don't assume you are not living in one are we together when the devil uses men to rise against you do you have enough influence or are you connected to people of influence that can come and speak the purposes of god hallelujah we must never reject influence brothers and sisters please take what i'm telling you seriously there are churches today who have refused to get land because of influence there are churches today who have never gotten certain opportunities because they have ignored influence they rejected it they resented it and it left them completely influence we go to the bank and by the privilege of god's influence many things that should not be done ordinarily are done to us because of influence if you reject influence you will never never experience certain dimensions of god influence is not just christians influence is god lifting you to a platform where you can get the loyalty of men you can get the whatever it is that they represent hallelujah the school of ministry students will soon be graduating and while we're trying to uh, prepare for their graduation and so on and so forth they were talking one time about their uniforms what they would wear and 
one one of the students of, of school of ministry is here he just got up and said look i can get you graduation gowns the only reason why they are not using it is simply because there are more students than the gowns can take but influence that's something somebody can be praying for three days and say lord wouldn't you raise somebody no many of the need driven prayers are products of lack of spiritual intelligence influence can answer many prayers do not be afraid i have many people many people many people could it be that our parents have rejected influence to their detriment could it be that several people across have rejected influence to their detriment influence is powerful powerful i remember when boko haram struck Mubi. many of them may be listening from here now and all of that destabilized the church the entire church in Mubi. everything scattered men of god had to go people were killed and all of that and god granted us the access through the power of influence to be part of those that god is using to bring the church within that territory back next month and back there again what a privilege to strengthen the believers and call everybody back again and say the purposes of God must thrive on this land that's the power of influence are we together I believe in influence I am friends to politicians talk whatever rubbish they are Christians many of them have gotten born again many of them know God and they have the purposes of God I advise some of them I pray for them I'm not looking for their money God has been faithful we ignore these people in the name of spirituality and when there is need for help nothing happens I remember I think it was in Niger state one of the year I, 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 I don't know before the, the last election or so the Khan people wanted me to go and talk they usually have men of God that go and talk with the government you know and talk with them and the last time they took one young guy the guy went there and did a lot of very naughty things you understand what I'm saying people misuse because they don't understand the protocol of greatness I've had the privilege to advise people high and mighty they love me there are things that influence have brought to my life have brought to this ministry there is no good thing that comes into this land that we are not aware of. There are systems of influence that grant us access to the choices of everything. Please believe in the power of influence. Otherwise, you are going to pay for it in, in unbelievable ways. I've shared with you a humorous story about a young guy in NDA and the Emir of Zaria where the guy wanted to get admission and he failed the test among other reasons they said there was a height requirement to join the nda and they said he fell short by a few inches sorry we cannot take you and the guy got angry and came one person connected to the other and the news got to the emir and the emir said that they should go and tell the commandant of nda that the emir has added the height of that man everybody say influence do you think they took him yes the person may probably have finished now the worthy soldier influence his destiny would have been jeopardized he would have been a farmer somewhere loitering in, in, in all kinds of pain and and doing it they, they, just a little farming the back of his house in pain but influence brought him back to destiny don't reject influence don't reject influence i will never reject influence if god grants me access to great people i will talk to them most of us know billy graham to be an evangelist a dimension of him that is hardly known was that he was an influential man he was a mentor to several presidents of America it was not luck he literally pressed for it he said how many times Billy Graham will write letters to the presidents and they would turn him down they would throw away the letters but he continued because he believed that he was destined among other things to be an advisor to presidents from today and um, not even from today it's, it's been like that for many years I, I believe every president goes to pay homage to him regardless of what their spiritual orientation is about God is the power of influence will cause men to do things for God that they had no business doing because of influence in the name of Jesus Christ when you go to Dubai you go to China they have never been under pressure to learn English because of influence 
they speak whatever language influence translates it to those who are the benefactors of whatever they represent chinese people have never seen i remember one keyboard years ago that my father bought from wherever I don't know where he got that keyboard brought it excitedly at home and said look there's a, a very classic keyboard and i looked at it and it was a toy full of chinese i looked at everything and i said how in the world are we supposed to i mean there is no, even on you know like english slash china it was pure i'm sure it's one of those things that were just shipped into the country i remember the frustration many times when i'm trying to look for the right voice because i can't speak it that's the power of influence they have not seen a need to downgrade their systems to English because they have value that the world must subscribe to Lord make me a man of influence lift your voice and pray in one minute I covet it the Bible says to covet earnestly I desire it not for self aggrandizement not for the carnality of it for the sake of your kingdom your purposes must be represented not in just in a land it must be represented among great people Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Lord grant us influence. As a house, we receive the grace. We receive the mantle. We know the value of influence as far as kingdom advance is concerned. And we receive it with all our hearts. Unashamedly and unapologetically, we receive kingdom influence. In business, in finances, in ministry, in government, we receive it. point I'll talk about tonight and then we'll pray the sixth way that the precepts the ordinances of God are preserved in a territory is through an open display of love an open display of the love of God love that is without prejudice love that is without tribalism love that is outside of religion any sect any movement any church any program that does not communicate the love of god to the community and the territory with which it is represented does not have a future regardless of the prayer fire regardless of the mentorship listen carefully regardless of the quality of the word the spirit of revelation that is prevalent within that territory if there is no love everybody say love no. not just love for the brethren the bible says to to love all men be good to them especially they that are of the household of faith i have watched the resentment that men of god the resentment that churches and ministries who are benefiting from a territory have towards that territory one of the requirements for being blessed and endorsed by a territory is that there must be a perception from that territory that these people love us and they seek our good are we together demonstrated in many ways but ultimately it must become a culture and a conviction I've seen many moves of God even in, in, in recent time across several territories where they have later fought the man of God. They fought the man of God, fought the church, fought everything. You know why? The community does not have a perception of the love. Not just love towards God, love towards men. I watch your life and I see the way you treat non-Christians. I watch your life and I see the way you treat people who are not your tribe. I watch your life and I see the way you treat people who did not have the privilege to go to school. I watch your life and I see that although you are a prayer giant, your resentment and sarcasm 
towards the territory God has planted you. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. First, he didn't just send the son to come and get out of the territory. It was love that brought him. If you want to see the purposes of God established and preserved, even through this ministry, we must love our environment. Are we together? We must love the body of Christ within this environment. I've, I've taught us that there may be one, listen to that message, is powerful. There are four encounters I've taught us here that you must have in your life to be efficient. Number one is an encounter with the Lord Jesus. The benefit of that encounter is life eternal, Zoe. Number two, an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The benefit of that encounter is leadership, guidance. The third encounter you must have is an encounter with the word of God, the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. Are we together? The benefit you get from that encounter is capacity for legislature, dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries and the systems of the kingdom but the last encounter that very few people have understood is an encounter with the body of christ an encounter with the body of christ not just god but the body of christ if you have not had an encounter with the body of christ you remain lopsided i trust god for when i will begin to write books I have a book that I'm going to write. The title is Balance. It's a reorientation of the bride of Christ. The book is about the bride of Christ. The wife of the lamb. And the dishonor that has been communicated to her. The scriptural text is jealousy is the rage of a man. I'm giving you a preview to the book. Jealousy is the rage when you touch a responsible man's wife and claim you love the man, are you not a hypocrite? Yes, are we together? Pastor Alpha, can someone insult your wife and then bow to you? That's a hypocrite. So when you hate his bride and claim you love him, something is missing somewhere. A wounded bride is still a bride. An imperfect bride is still a bride. We must have an encounter with the body of Christ. I was sharing with a dear friend, he's seated here. We're having a little discussion in the afternoon. And I was just talking to him about the body of Christ. Let me tell you something. One of the greatest keys to be granted unusual anointings, please listen to me. Greater than your prayer life, greater than fasting, is your love for God and your love for his body. You will never be given the power to heal the sick if you hate the people you are going to heal. Are we together? Every spiritual gift works by love. Every manifestation of the power of God works by love. If I hate Ejimi right now and God gives me prophecy for Ejimi, the purity with which that prophecy left the throne is not the purity with which it will be delivered. That, that prophecy will rub off on my hatred. And chances are that I will add to that prophecy what God did not say. Which was a derivative of my personal vendetta with him. Are we together now? Love. Most of us trivialize love. We love power. If I tell everybody shout power, you stand up with two hands and say power oh God. Shout miracles. Miracles. Shout gifts. Gifts. Shout love and we say the ladies can't shout it. That's the reason why many people never walk in the high places of the spirit. The Bible says no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it come into the hearts, the comprehension of any man, that which God has in store for they that love him. Are we together? He says by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, not how you pray, not the wheelchairs you lift up, when you have love one for another. The Bible says, how can you claim you love God that you have not seen when you hate your brother? Listen, having a different perspective is not a reason for hatred. There are many people that work, the extended workforce of the ministry includes several people. There are people watching from the projector stand outside. Some of the drivers will soon come. They are Muslims. I love them. 
I greet them all the time. When they give birth, our protocol department goes to greet them. We invite them for dinner. The Muslims know that I love them. I have neighbors who are Muslims. Whenever they are celebrating any occasion, I try to greet them. Sometimes we sit and see brotherly kindness. I remember when Koinonia used to do counseling sessions before we stop. Ask those who come. You see throngs of Muslim families come together with everything, not in hiding. They come openly. Muslims recommend people and say, look, go to that man of God. And they come. Oh, I am Haji Adis. I am Alaji this. And I say, you are so welcome. You are so welcome. Not what are you doing here? <laughs> the world is not for Christians. The world is for anybody God allows to arrive here. Whoever. <laughs> whoever arrives here. Whoever arrives here. Deserves to be shown love. There are families. Some of your families have a mixture of Christians and Muslims. Look at the fight that happens there. The prayer warrior slash priest is the greatest troublemaker in that family because he disagrees with everything. Everything. I remember when I was in primary school, they do Muslim prayers, Christian prayers, and after they do it, everybody hugs themselves. We, truly speaking, growing up, I did not know any difference between Muslims and Christians. We celebrated Christmas together. When it was time for Salah, we looked forward to Rams arriving and all of that. I mean, people were just happy. You see people. But the resentment, especially of the church. Are we together? There are three people that come around. How are you? I'm, I'm, what's your name? I'm James. How are you? My name is Femi. How are you? My name is Abdullahi. Uh, you stand here. And we try to be able to say, look, we are the church. No, sir. You are the light of the world. 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 A city set on a hill. As far as we are represented in this land, everybody will be blessed from it. We will pray for everybody. We will strive to get as many to the saving knowledge of Jesus. But regardless, I, there are people I pray for. I pray for them with all my heart. Some of them come and they bring their chants. I'm sorry, sir. You know, the way my practice, I tell them, I said, no problem. But this is the way it is. Um, you know, when you want to see this, these charms will not help. Not, hey! You are bringing charm. My Jesus, where are you? Show up all these kinds of things that we do. No, sir. We are not going to bless the world that way. Are we together? Some of us have neighbors. Six o'clock. You are shouting. You open the door and just move. Hey, sister, Femi, come. Brother, this, come. And we're on our way going. And all the Muslim people, good morning, sir. And they are watching. Let me tell you, listen to me. We will never preserve the ordinances of the kingdom that way. But when there is love, you hear that someone is sick. Uh -uh. Amina, now you are sick. What is wrong? Is your mother around? No, she's not around. Let's go to the hospital. Ah, and the lady is watching you. You go to the hospital. You've paid the bills. Please. Amina is also my daughter. And the Hajia comes and says, ah, ah, I thought you were supposed to go to church. And say, the reason why I would have gone to church is what I am doing now. I'm not a hypocrite. I will not go to church and let somebody die. The very training I would receive in the church was to take care of such a person. And I'm here seated. The woman goes back. I love families where you see people regardless of religion, regardless of this, they love themselves. There is this resentment. And we pastors are the architects of programming members to hate any other person who is not them. The worst part of it is that it has even entered the church. It's no longer Christians versus non-Christians. Denomination. Every time you see somebody that dresses this way, you are not told to hate directly. It's through a series of messages that draw a straight line. Hate this person. If you see any lady who behaves this way, hate this person. If you see any brother that behaves this way, hate this person. If you see any young man of God preaching, hate this person. If you see any ministry where the power of God manifests, hate them. If you see any ministry where the man of God cannot even pray in tongues, hate him. We all combine that war 
and think we are being spiritual and God is watching us. God is not a Christian. No? I hope you are aware. God is not a Christian. God is the God of all flesh. God is not a Christian. When the, when the, when the angel appeared to Joshua, he said, are you for us? Or against us he said you are joking I'm not for anybody I'm standing on God's side whoever I find there is the one for me you are not there you are you go away immediately the last supper that we talk about in heaven good news is one big table and everybody who arrives there must sit there you, you are not given the privilege of choosing your neighbor we are there one big family the Bible already told us listen one of the biggest secrets of the grace of God upon my life is that I never resent any man of God. I never resent any church. You will never hear me open my mouth to talk against any man of God. No. If I mention names, it is for commendation and for blessings. Now, I have my reservations. I have my convictions. But it is not enough reason. You see me greet and love people anywhere. I have friends and great people that we vary sharply in beliefs. But I love them with all my heart. Are we together? Who taught you to love only those who agree with you? Doctrinally, religiously. Some of us innocently, our mothers have indoctrinated us. Hate this one. In this neighborhood, everybody is a witch except us. Someone prepares a nice meal. And they bring it and say, if I, if, I, if I see you touch that rice, the slap I will give you. And the neighbors are watching. Bring those people for deliverance and see who manifests. You'll be surprised that the only thing the unbeliever needs is salvation. But the so-called jumping noise maker, before they even arrive and sit, they're already shaking and shouting and flying up and down. Let's be careful. The greatest enemies of Jesus were not prostitutes. They were not children. He loved them. When he saw a woman who was caught in adultery, um, he said, woman, where are than accusers? He said, neither do I accuse you. That's Jesus for you. He met a woman by the well. And the woman was afraid as usual because everyone had treated her that way. Jesus said, you have five husbands. The one that is with you is not even your husband. I thought Jesus said, you said, Abba, one husband, two husbands. Because that's what Joshua Selma would have done. Madam, what, what is wrong with you? You have not listened to my message, Essential for a Glorious Relationship. Thank God Jesus is not me. I'm the one who strives to become him. Are we together? But here's a loving, loving I remember one time I was counseling someone, I think he had three wives, and then he was telling me, he said, well, the other wife, the third wife is my daughter, and I was shocked. He just passed the statement, and then he said, come back. The what? Ah, oh God, you are mentioning this thing, and, you are, and, and the Holy Spirit convicted me. You see, when something has happened, it has happened. God manages that system to bear his will. There are no longer regrets. Doesn't mean you should do it. Yes, yes, yes. Doesn't mean you should do it. Don't go and marry anyhow. But I'm saying, when you meet people and something has already happened, if a lady has already gotten pregnant and she's giving birth to the child, you won't carry the child and put him back to her. The child has arrived. The most important thing is let's get God into that life. Yeah. That's how we salvage the situation. Listen, by the grace of God, one of my life's goal is to be the arm for wounded people to find shelter. And I say amen to that. Are we together? that when someone is wounded I will not just be an anointed man of God but a shoulder that you can lean on that when other people are moving and shouting and running their mouth like we do in the body of Christ that it is you will be the shoulder for people to lean on oh I used to pray before but something happened to my life hey something happened what happened pride I be but you are you are the arm he says it's all right there is a system in the kingdom where mighty men can arise again. Love. Is God speaking to us? 
there is nobody who want to be a member of such kind of a church nobody will not want to be a, a leader of such kind of a of a past look at what this guy is doing <laughs> Can you imagine? I'm busy preaching and using him for example, and he's there. Well, I love him too. God bless you, Sam. I love you so much. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. The workers in this ministry know that I love them. I love the leaders outspokenly. How many of you see Benga when he shines? Come, Benga. When he shines, when he shines, when he shines, he said he didn't do it today, but I mean. He bought the clipper by himself and trust me, he does a good job. Better than, I mean, he shines that thing and brings it for me to impart upon it. It's called love. When you see people, anointing and love can go hand in hand. You don't have to drag your face as if you are the person. Who, no, 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 no. I love people. God bless you. You see me and it's me. You, you see me and the little children. I'm sure it's only because protocol has stopped them now. Otherwise, these children can run while I'm preaching now. They don't care. To them, your Joshua Selman is apostle to you. That, that, he's the person who plays with me when I'm ready for play. After service, they run. They don't care whether I ate or not, whether I've broken fast or not. They just jump and expect me to hold them. It's called love. There is a side of God we have failed to reveal because we have thought that revealing it is weakness. I love Muslims. You will never see tribalism in this ministry. Never. Never. The workers have been taught. They've been taught. Oh, you are Igbo. You are Yoruba. Mm -mm -mm. No, no man after the flesh. I love my people. Don't get me wrong. There are my people listening to me from just. I love all of you with all my heart. But trust me. Trust me. I love the body of Christ. I have gone to every region in this nation. They have received me with joy and honor without prejudice without sentiment i humorously used to talk with my people and i tell them i say we have many houses in this nation and then we keep listing all the houses the frequent places that we visit i'll be going to Mubi now um next month and whenever i reach there do you know how they greet me daddy or yo yo that's how they dance because that's home and it's home i love them with all my heart I told them the next time I come here, I'll look for land and buy because I think I qualify to be uh, whatever it is, the, 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 the local, the son of the soil of that place. How about Kogi? The, the, the amount of food I've eaten in Kogi qualifies me to be given something, maybe a chief tenancy title. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love the body of Christ with all my heart. No resentment, no prejudice. I see a man of God, before I even know who you are and what you believe, you receive a big hug from me. How are you? You are hungry, sir. This is something to eat. Before I start finding out whether you believe whatever. You say, I believe in Jesus. I also believe in culture. I still love you, but would you want to look at it this way? Not, hey! I want, uh, blessed is the man who does not stand in the council of the weekend. I love people. There are Muslims seated here in this congregation, inside and outside, listening to me. And after service, they come and greet. I love them. That's how many of them have become born again. But whether or not they become born again, hating them. I love everybody. My neighbors, they are little children. When I see them, I, they just jump and come and hug me and I lift all of them. I don't care whether you are a Christian or this, you are a herbalist, whether there's a chap on you, that's not the issue. That's why God allowed me immune myself. I lift them and I'm happy and bless them. Change your outlook about the world. My world is a beautiful world. My world is not a world in crisis. Having enemies, church versus uh -uh. No. My world is a beautiful world. I love people. I don't resent people. I don't pride myself at the pain of people. Walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are instruments of peace. Lord, make us instruments.
there are several files from different prayer groups in Zaria different ministries in Zaria man of God pray for us I'm praying with all my heart man of God we have a little program we need 10 naira okay I can help you with 2 naira I don't care whether you are with me I don't it's not my business the most important thing is I love you you love Jesus you are my friend you truly are my friend what a beautiful way to live this ugly resentful way the whole world will not become koinonia stop dreaming about it kingdom advancement is not establishing koinonia everywhere kingdom advancement is koinonia establishing Christ everywhere are we together yes the mandate is extended by many of you here and many ministries that will come out of here that's true kingdom advance not an advancement of one person's agenda and ideology but an advancement of his kingdom and it's a privilege to contribute the quota that your ministry or whatever platform can bring in kingdom advance i love the body i honor the husband and i honor his wife I honor the husband, Christ. I honor his wife, the ecclesia. I honor the bride of Christ. I will never resent the bride of Christ. Though wounded, she still deserves my honor. Though in ignorance in many areas, she still deserves my honor. Are we together? I meet a man of God somewhere. I greet him whether I know you or not. Oh, you're a pastor. God bless you. Where? What are you doing? Oh, I'm a pastor with this and that and that and that. Oh, really? Oh, that's nice. How are you? Oh, I'm a pastor with deeper life. Ah, how is our father, Papa Kumui? Oh, you know Papa Kumui. I love him with all my heart. Oh, I'm a member of MFM. Really? How is our father, Daniel Lukoya? Ah, he's this. I mean, you love him. Really? Are you a member of MFM? No, not exactly, but these are fathers. They bless us. A child receives from anywhere his father is. That's the body of Christ. Are we together? How are you? Oh, you are a winner. Yes, God bless you. Oh, I was blessed by Papa Oyedepo's message. I was so blessed. Are we together? Every, it doesn't matter what fellowship I can preach there. It doesn't matter what ministry I can preach. I remember when the Anglican Communion invited me. They forgot that I was a seminarian. Ah. I saw, I think it was the vicar. He was so happy when I was reciting the Apostles' Creed. And I was talking and you know, ah, he was so impressed. And after the meeting, they loved me with all his heart. And I greeted him, appreciated him. I love people with all my heart. You don't pray in tongues, no problem, I love you. You are limited by your understanding. I pray that you improve, but no problem. I love you. Are we together? That's what Jesus taught us. Now listen to me. I was sharing again with my friend this afternoon. Correcting the body of Christ is an office. Not everybody has the authorization to correct the body. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Correcting the body is an office. The same way if, come, Emeka is writing his last exam in a few weeks and you'll be a full doctor. Huh? It's already, a, it's just to, for them to, all of them, see our, our doctor people there. I mean, we have so many doctors, children sick, while prayer is going, injection is coming here, attacking from every angle. I tell you, divine health is going to be here for a very long time. It has come here to stay. Praise God. Now watch this. If I am sick, will I allow any roadside, these guys that sell pharmacies on, they sell drugs on, on one box on their head that they can mix everything. Will I allow that person to treat me? I go to an authorized person. What authorized him? There is an association. When he writes his final exam, he's going to be officially authorized to practice medicine. Is that true? Yes correcting do you think god will create a body and not allocate the doctors that take care of it are we together the same way you have lecturers that teach the mind of that body you have doctors coming to correct the body is an office one of the first requirements to be qualified to collect to correct the body is that you must love the body without reservation the whole body must be loved without reservation to end the right
to correct her. Help that person under the anointing. The moment, listen, 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 let me have your attention here. The moment you do not love the body, you cannot effectively correct the body. If this guy is a pastor, come Mike, and Mike is a pastor, XYZ Ministries International, ABC Ministries International, and I come, I'm a pastor. I don't like what Mike is doing. I already have a bias. I can never correct it in truth. Are we together? But I can stand here loving the body. And when I say, Mike, I think um, you are supposed to put your hand this way, not this way. I do it in love. Are we together? The context of my communication shows that I love Mike genuinely. And I seek with all my heart to see him rise. Hallelujah. I rebuke many of you here. Sometimes I come to preach and the series can be fire. You know, there are series that I hammer. As soon as they finish preaching, your body is just shaking and you can't wait for the grace so that you quietly go. No matter how hard I am on you, you discern my heart and know that there's love. There are men of God, you shout at members like that. Next Sunday, you have empty pews. But when they know that you love them, I rebuke people. I rebuke the workers. I rebuke worship team. Worship team. I love you people with all my heart. But there are times that they deserve rebuke. And what does a good leader do? You rebuke them to the gravity that will create the effect. But they know I love them. I rebuke all kinds of people. Protocol everywhere. So you don't come and just begin to lambast the body of Christ tear down every ministry tear down every man of God carry the baby and the bad water and the bad water mix everything together and throw them no if my leg is wounded don't insult my head my head is still good appreciate the fact that I bab well it's just that there's wound on my leg and then bring bandage and treat it don't keep pointing and say ah you mean this big injury is on your leg how can such a good head have bad leg you are not solving the problem bring a bandage I wrote a song years ago the bandage is larger than the wound powerful song one day I will, I will play this keyboard by myself and sing it are we together now bandage the wound and say father thank you for the privilege your head is good but this is where the problem is and I come as a member of the body too and I remedy you and two weeks later the wound is healed and he's standing the church is stronger the body is stronger Christ is exalted it's only in the church that we destroy our wounded soldiers a man of God serves a ministry for many years and an issue comes around his life and the people he has served for many years turn against him as if he became a devil in one month no sir no sir I manage a lot of cases between men of God and sometimes I see the bleeding that comes from them they serve people with all their heart and maybe sometimes something happened around their life that you know destroyed their ministry or whatever it is and you see the resentment my prayer for you is that you become the arm that can wipe the tears of people that every time people are crying they say I know that Pastor Alpha is a prayer warrior. He's a revelation giant, but he's also a loving hand. What a good testimony. Jesus said, let the little children come. The children were running to Jesus, and all of a sudden, said, guy, guy, leave me alone. He, he's, he's, he has finished fasting, allow him. And Jesus said, yeah, who taught you this? Let the little children come to me, and do not despise them, for for such is the king. I have come to seek and save the lost. I have come as a man of God. When I, when I travel and go to regions, many times pastors come from other cities to come, you know, just in honor of the meeting. And I look at their faces. I see some already intimidated. I see some standing. And I am very quick to honor all of them. I come to them and I say, men of God, I love you. I honor you. I have not come to outshine you. I know you have listened to my messages. Don't be intimidated. I am here to lift up your hand. I am here 
you are already doing something great i don't go to a city and destroy what the people are doing there i go to a city and i tell them look you are doing something great and i'm here to lift up your hands so that jesus will be seen you don't come and open a shop near another believer and as soon as you open a shop near that believer you just sit down go and bring oil go and bring water go and bring this and pour it and say you will see you will know that the god of my of apostle joshua say you know there's fire in this coin on here wait and see your shop and then the person's shop is going down your lovely say see i told you this anointing works in this ministry you are an immature believer an accident happens 10 members eight die and the only two members that survive are the members of your church and then they come and say everybody died except us remember that prophecy that papa gave us and and uh, and, 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 and an immature man of god is happy the death of eight believers is a setback to kingdom advance we must have a corporate heart are we together now i was asking i was asking him uh, about the, the flood in benway state and what is going on because my heart i've just been thinking about the people there and i was telling him i said look Benway has tried for years to bring me by God's grace I would I should try to visit that land next year and we're just talking and those of you listening from Benway I love you uh, it's not my my intention not to have come and trust me next year in the name of Jesus Christ next year Benway should be part of the itinerary let's let's go there and contribute to the great things that they are doing there whenever you approach ministry as a contribution in addition to what god is already doing you become loved you become valued and every man of god within that territory loves you but when you go to a territory and push everybody away as though you are doing nonsense you are not even praying in tongues and you are a pastor you are not even this and that you are not collecting offering in your church eh? you are not you approach the pulpit with a heart of love you bless people seated in this place are mighty men and women of God they come quietly to sit down while the meeting is happening after service there are many people who have traveled from many regions I don't stand Joshua Selman this is him in case you have heard about him this is Apostle Joshua Selman yes bring your demons bring your sickness no 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 it's a privilege of his grace I will never take for granted I'm nothing without you. It's grace, your grace shines on me. It's your grace, your grace. I'm nothing without you. pastors of fellowships and groups learn it never make your fellowship a place that divides the body are we together call to order people whose lives have a track record of the no 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 especially some of us who are younger coming up in ministry we have hardly seen anything and we're already sustaining this bossy attitude no sir no sir I've shared about my love and honor for CGC. The, the leadership of CGC, I say it in the open. The CGC represents the most humble set of ministers I have seen in all my life till date. Truly speaking, truly speaking. I have never, never seen men of God so anointed together with their wives. The mama of CGC is such a humble woman. Mommy will see me like this and left for her. A woman that is old enough to be my mother how many times? Mommy will want to kneel down. I know what some of you will do. You will stand and say, well, mommy, I, I, let me tell you how it is. You won't look for it, but if it comes, you will enjoy it. You are still a criminal. It's, listen, it's like buying alcohol or you are given. A 
drunkard is one who drinks alcohol, not one who drink by buying with his money. Whether you are given as a gift, it is the act of drinking alcohol that makes you a drunkard. A wise person. Just because they acknowledge you and they come, ah, apostle, sir, and the woman, eh, my mother, wanting to kneel down for me, and then I stupidly stand there and I, no, I will join her and kneel down. She kneels down, I will lie down and roll. I say, mommy, let's, let's roll on the floor there. Some of us are already receiving that. You, your appetite for outshining is almost a cancer. You don't search for it by yourself. But when it comes, you don't mind. Where is the apostle? Where is he? That guy. That's it. Yes, apostle. Joshua Selman. And in case you doubt that I'm anointed, give me five minutes. Let me handle the mic. That's not a person that will last. If it means God taking the ministry from me to retain the humility he has given me, it's a worthy bargain. I will give up koinonia a thousand times to maintain my work with God and to maintain the life. Humility has blessed me more than financial intelligence. It has given me access to the hearts of people. There is nothing as beautiful as someone highly anointed and truly humble. Not fake humility that is, is just, no, 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 no. Humility that is based on revelation. I love the body of Christ. I love the church of the Lord Jesus in Zaria. Every time I pass around and I see different prayer groups, prayer cells, different people, I see a lot of, you know, our, some of them are our brethren here. Some of them have crusades in different lands. We just, I think there was a crusade conducted recently in Gombe. You know, I am excited seeing the people that God has granted grace to raise, doing a lot of things. I'm not pushing them and saying, who no, it should be only me. Only me. No, only you is this is that one is, is just culture. We bring our cultural limitations, mix it with the anointing, and make it look like it's the Holy Spirit that is responsible for all that outcome. No, sir. Let's separate between the limitations that came from our personal sense of poor esteem. I love it when I see God lift people. I love it when I see God use people. During the school of ministry, I was uh, the, their practicum, I was seated outside and I was almost shedding tears. I was watching as great men and women, powerful people, dispensing truth. I sat down. The reason why I left this place and I sat down outside was I didn't want them to be conscious of the fact that I'm there and then be conscious of not, I, I wanted them to just have their way and minister. And what a powerful meeting it was. For me, it's a pride. For many men of God, it's an intimidation. No, no, no. Let's, let's clamp these people down very soon before they outshine. <laughs> no. Honor is a mantle. If it's on you, it's on you. Shines on me. Shines on me. I'm everything with you. Shines on me. Shines on me. It's your day. sent me a text a few weeks ago i think arm robbers entered and i think it's a small church somewhere i don't know if it's in abuja or nasarawa state and he sent me a text he said man of god i don't know you but arm robbers just entered they stole some of their gadgets you know i'm sure maybe the church was not secured and all of that i didn't have to ask who are you what what church do you belong to what do you believe do you listen to my message or not that's that was none of my business sir really Ah, I called him. How are you, sir? Let me pray for you. I hope they didn't hurt anybody. Where is the church? I pray for you with all my heart in the name of Jesus. Please send me your account number. Whatever little I can send. If it cannot be enough to buy a speaker, at least you can buy a recharge card and make calls. Cheer up. Don't worry. Father, strengthen this brother in the faith. The devil has come to discourage him. But my brother, I encourage you. Stand strong. Oh, apostle, you have been a mentor to me. That's not the issue. I'm praying for you now. The loss of one 
is the loss of the body the gain of one is the gain of the body lift your voice as you are seated and cry for the grace a baptism of love for the body i'm not doubting your love for god but your love for the body i show you why you are not seeing miracles in your life i show you why there are certain levels of investments that you may not see i show you why god may not be able to trust you with blessings for the body lord i love your body ah i love your body i love every church i love every denomination i love every man of god there may be difference in belief systems there may be difference in values our levels of alignment may differ our levels of spiritual results may differ but i love what you are doing in nigeria the church in nigeria is not dead the church in nigeria is not weak she can't be better but christ is in the midst of her church the perfecter of the bride 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 inside outside make sure you are praying the perfecter of the bride hallelujah we are soon going to stand up but i'm going to give you one more prayer point i'd like you to pray and say lord the spirit of sarcasm and resentment take it out of me i didn't even know when it entered me i laugh at men of god i laugh at business people i laugh at other tribes anyone who is not yoruba i laugh at them and resent them anyone who is not evil i laugh at them and resent them anyone who is not a northerner anyone who is not a christian any muslim i see i hate it no sir no sir no sir jesus taught us to love jesus taught us to love it's one way we allow the purposes of god to be preserved that the church within a territory is known for love not hate not hate hallelujah listen we are going to pray brothers and sisters look at me if it is authentic power you want if it is grace and anointing you want more than fasting and more than prayer you must love his body you cannot love a husband and hate his wife you are a hypocrite i cannot love a jimmy and hate hope i cannot love pastor alpha and hate annie it doesn't work that way when you love a man you love his wife if you love christ the head of the church then you must love his bride yes still getting perfected yes with many mistakes in the midst of her yes with many scandals in the midst of her yes with many people blindly refusing dimensions of god but you must love people i love every man of god i love every pastor i love every leader in zaria across this nation i love them i watch television and i see different preachers across different channels manifesting what they know and understand by the, the kingdom in many ways and i see a lot of things i have my reservation but i love them in spite i love all of them with all my heart the same way many people love me in spite of my own imperfections in spite of my own limitations they overlook the excellence level of our messages some messages are not very clear they overlook it and focus on what god is doing that is the same way you must sow that same seed of love you can't be resentful over everybody are we together yes the lady did not cover her hair okay it's all right reserve your reservation about your concept there but it's not enough reason to hate oh the lady covered her hair ah i don't believe in covering of hair no problem but it's not enough reason to go around hating people no sir we must love the body when we do this as a territory you will see revival break out in zaria and from zaria across every part one worship minister will finish worshiping and hug the other one and give him the mic with joy not give him the mic like you have come to stop me from shining no the body think kingdom not koinonia think kingdom think body not joshua selman thank god for the honor thank god for the loyalty based on administration but if you want to be effective in the kingdom you must think beyond me you must think beyond koinonia you must think kingdom and the purposes of god hold hands
hands together. Though we are many, we are one body. We are one body in Christ. Though we are many, we are one body. We are one body in Christ. One more time, let it be a song of love and unity. Though we are many. for Christians, a love for Muslims, a love for traditional worshippers, a love for any and everybody. Praise a love for Yoruba people, a love for Igbo people, a love for Northern people. Lift your voice and pray. Grace to love. Little boys and pray. Drive far from your life the spirit of hate. Drive far from your life the spirit of resentment. Exalt the body in love. Build the body in love. Correct Muslims in love. Correct traditional worshippers in love. Deal with your unbelieving relatives with love. It is the love of God that brings them to Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, in any way I have contributed to the division of the body within my territory, I ask for mercy. Lift your voice and pray. In any way, through ignorance, through limited spiritual understanding, in any way I have contributed, I have planted the seeds of this God among members. I have planted the seeds of this God among men of God, among deacons. Among church workers, I have created a sense of competition and appetite to outshine. I ask for mercy. I ask for mercy. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. prayer points and we're done for tonight next prayer point lord trust me with any dimension of your power available i will not disappoint you it will be for the body not for my members trust me may i be a worthy vessel oh god that you will find to host your prosperity to host your prophetic grace to host the apostolic fire leadership to host administration let it please you to trust me let it please you to trust me it will be for your body it will be for your body Preservers of divine ordinances. We are going to pray. I want us to spend about five minutes 
intercede for the body of Christ in this nation? Listen, but particularly intercede for the body of Christ in Zaria. Lord, Zaria remains a place of revival. This is where we are domiciled for now, so we pray for the peace of this city. We decree and declare this town remains crisis free. This city remains development conducive in the name of Jesus. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is favored upon this land. Are we praying? Lift your voice and pray. 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 We pray for the churches in the six geopolitical zones of this nation. We bless them. We strengthen their hands in the spirit. Lord, we declare that there be a supply, a greater supply of the spirit, a greater supply of financial resources, a greater supply of the spirit of illumination, revelation, a greater supply of your grace, a greater supply of influence. We pray for the church in this nation. We and declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is standing strong. Every church, every cathedral, every pastor, every prophet, every apostle, every priest, we decree and declare that their lives permit your purposes to be established across that territory. Their lives permit your purposes to be established. Their lives permit your purposes to be established. Lord, heal the broken-hearted, broken-hearted men of God, broken-hearted members, broken-hearted churches, broken-hearted denominations. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, heal them. Rest on backsliders, renew anointings, multiply auctions, multiply encounters. For the church in Zaria, the spiritual heritage that you have placed upon this land, we decree and declare in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus. It will not be lost. We prophesy that we are preservers, preservers, preservers of the mysteries of healing, preservers of the power of the Holy Spirit. just putting in my spirit that we should pray for our children born and unborn ages 0 to age 15 we need to travel we need to cry and say Lord let an angel of your presence begin a walk with those generation of people let revival fire once again Break out, come on, pray. Kato Sadakasha, Lakaria Kato Kaskia. We capture that age range in Zaria. We do not neglect the generation coming. We do not neglect our children. We prophesy upon them. Children who are here manifest, and those who are in the loins of prophecy, we decree and declare. We establish by the Spirit. The spiritual heritage, the pattern must be passed across. Our land must be a place of revival. From PZ to Shika to Sabo, we declare and declare. Raise voices, raise prophets, raise apostles, raise pastors, raise evangelists. Let the young ones begin to see visions. Let the young ones begin to have encounters. Let the young ones receive and partake 
of this heritage of spiritual substance. that Zaria remains a portal for kingdom activities. We make a declaration that Nigeria remains your firstborn. We decree and declare that the mystery that is upon this nation that has produced great men and women, I pray, oh God, that that covenant be revisited again. Every communication of this honor to fathers of faith that has come out of this region, every dishonor to the generals of faith across the globe every dishonor to men and women that you are using that has come out of any church or any ministry in Zaria we declare that the blood speak in the name of Jesus we communicate our unflinching honor for you and for your body we love your body we believe in the possibilities that are enshrined in your body and Lord we decree and declare that koinonia specifically remains a place where you have unrestrained access to manifest your multifaceted possibilities in the name of the lord jesus this place remains a ministry of impact it remains a ministry of transformation in the name of jesus keep the fire burning keep the lampstand burning be that fire that burns and will not quench day or night let lives let destinies let ministries arise from this place to the entire globe in the name of jesus and lord we make a covenant with you again that we remain preservers of your ordinances we will teach our children we will teach our children's children we will mentor them on the ways of the spirit we will teach them the precepts of the kingdom we will not leave them in ignorance the move of god will not be lost in our time it will be preserved and preserved sufficiently in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you and we give you all the honor in the name of Jesus. Keep standing everybody. One of the ways to preserve the precepts of the kingdom is to make sure, listen everybody, inside, outside, those following online, that people come into the saving knowledge of Jesus. Giving your life to Christ is not an initiation into a religion. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He said, come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden. 
and he leaves you with a promise that I will give you rest. Are we together? There are people here, you struggle, you've lived your life and you are saying, man of God, if you will make a call, I'm ready to run to Jesus. Or perhaps there are people here, as you listen to me talk about the body of Christ, you know that you really need to make your ways right with God. You are saying, man of God, I remember giving my heart to the Lord, but several things happen around my life and right now I don't even know where I stand. If you give me a chance, I can run to Jesus. Whether you are inside or outside any of the overflows, I'm going to count one to five for time. Say, please, I want you to rush like there's fire on the mountain and make your way to the front here. I want to pray for you. Can we honor them? One, God bless you. Keep coming. They are coming. Don't wait for anyone to come. Be the first. Two, there are people seated in the congregation and the Lord is talking to them and saying, you heard the message and it affected you. This is not all of them, several people inside, outside, being convicted by the Spirit of God. Man of God, I'm not sure whether I'm saved or not. Can I join them? Of course, join them. Join them quickly. Young and old, rich or poor, male or female, old or young, join them quickly. Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling. Win that war in your heart. Don't allow the person you came with cause a resistance to you. The Bible says in that day when you hear his voice, harden not your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness. God bless you. Make your way to the front. You are running to Jesus. Swallow your pride and come. I believe there are still people being convicted by the Spirit. Still struggling. Should I come? Should I not come? Several people outside, I believe, make your way. Please clear the way for them as they come. We understand it can be a very bold decision, but make that decision for the sake of yourself, your children, your children's children. Make that decision. Make that decision. God bless you. Hallelujah. Now, if you're joining them, please run quickly and join them. Those of you coming out, I sincerely salute you. Thank you so much for um, responding. It takes a lot of courage to come out I understand I want to lead you to make this prayer whether or not you've made it before I want you to make it with understanding believing that it's not just a repetition but it's a miracle happening to you lift your right hand and say after me Lord Jesus say it from the depth of your heart Lord Jesus I come to you tonight just as I am I ask you to cleanse me I ask you to forgive me I decree and declare that I believe that you are the son of God I receive your life into my spirit and I declare that from today I am a child of God the spirit of God lives within me I declare that the way of the flesh the way of the devil is far from me from tonight I receive grace the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I reign in life in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. I declare your sins forgiven by the power of the Holy Spirit. I declare that a new life starts for you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace and the power that keeps men keep you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for making this decision. Please arise, all of you. Follow the gentleman waving his hands and they will, they will get across to you on our behalf. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, you appreciate it. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Kateka Kos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.